Happy Friday, everybody. Good morning. It's the first week of April is done, and, and who cares? Me and Bobby care. We love spring, right? Is April spring? It's spring, right? Yeah, it is. You couldn't. You could fool me by the weather sometimes, but April is spring. April is spring. I don't give a fuck about spring. Spring's dumb. Fall's dumb. Let's just do winter and summer. Why, if we're going to get rid of the, the um, what you call it, the farmer's wake up thing, whatever the hour Daylight and saving. hour shit. Yeah, if we're going to get rid of that shit, let's also get rid of the other two seasons. No one cares. Let's have longer summers. People get happy. So just make it fucking longer. Let's go summer from May to fucking October. Well, uh, we'll talk to the people who control the weather. Yeah. Well, we can't because last show we titled it Teenage Mutant Ninja Jews, and I don't think they're talking to us anymore right now. <laughs> By the way, um, it is fun to watch in our Patreon that people get excited when I choose things they write as our titles. Yeah, it's like winning a prize. Dominic was like, yeah, I made it. I'm like, you don't understand how tremendous Teenage Mutant Ninja Jews, like how much that has stuck with me for two days of how, and I'm not meaning this in the wrong way, my friend, you were wonderful by doing it. How simplistic and ridiculous that title was to make me so happy. Because here we are, you and I are always trying to think of like fun puns and words and all, and overthinking it. When in simplicity, just in life, all you really need is just someone to say Jews. And that was it. That's all was needed. I mean, it felt like that's what our guest was waiting for. Just the J word and then out the gate running. Our guest from uh, Wednesday, Matt Sloan, did a great job. Matt Sloan, I have learned, I don't know him well, but I have learned one thing. If you're going to talk to that man, talk to him in the morning. Because last night he came to support another comic at the show I was at. And man, that guy was fucked up. That guy at night gets so drunk and so loud. And so, it's like he's, and he's there to support another comic. And he, he, said, he comes to me and goes, hey, Pat, it was great to see you on Wednesday. He's all happy. And I'm like, yeah, man, you did great, whatever. Um, thanks for being on. And he's like, oh, if we could, could we all, he said, want me to ask the club if you're okay, if him and his friends could all sit up front. And I'm like, no, man, you, you're a comedian. You shouldn't be sitting up front. I know you support our comedians, but we don't need you up front. And he goes, well, I laugh. I go, yes, dude, you're maniacal. You're one of the few comedians that laughs out loud, but other people don't. And we also don't need you like yelling to them, but he was off to the side enough where he still was yelling to them. And then afterwards, a friend of his moved on. There's a contest they're doing at this thing I was hosting. And Frank, um, Frank was running the contest. He, uh, he told them, you know, just bring your people, whatever. So they're all fired up. They're going to decide the winner. A friend of his who uh, he came supported won, and he's screaming and he's holding her shoulders. He's going, it was, it was the greatest five minute set I've ever seen you do. It was so tight. It was, he's just screaming. It was so tight at this woman. So if you walk by and didn't hear the first part, he's just grabbing an older woman and yelling, it was so tight. Like a young man who just got a hooker and was now thanking her for the service. I doubt most hookers are so tight, though. But no, I'm thinking the guy, as a compliment, especially if he doesn't have the money, would yell things like, but it was so tight. <laughs> Thank you. It was great. It's kind of like when you um when you go and visit an Airbnb and you had a good time, but the place wasn't the best, but you want you don't want to get charged extra money. So you're like, the place was so beautiful. Like, it wasn't so beautiful. It was all right. But you're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it was fucking hyping it up, you know? I, I see that. I, I don't think pimps tend to be like, if you give me a Yelp review. I'm going to let you off the hook here, though. No one who saw this interaction thought a pimp was involved. This just felt like something where someone paid. It looked more like if a guy paid his mom's friend to fuck him. You know what I mean? Like, it had, you can it had do that? Five. I mean, I think you can pay anyone to fuck you if you try. There's a movie about that, isn't there? I think most movies are about that. Hmm. I'm going to have to do some research. <laughs> really? Most movies, usually the whole thing ends with some guy like, can I fuck you? And she's like, do you have money? And they're like, all right, here's a, here's a song and dance. Yeah, I guess that's fair. It is fair. Do you know what's not fair? The poor Charlotte the Stingray and her waiting for her fucking children. Nothing yet. Still no babes. They're watching. I saw a video on uh, they put up yesterday saying, hey, sorry, no babies yet. And we're hoping, and we're hoping. But for now... Just know that Charlotte's doing great. And then they showed like a camera in, underwater. Then the camera did a turn back. You know, you can turn your camera back and look at yourself. And you can see the top of the tank that the fucking woman that's supposedly swimming through the aquarium is. It's, 
She's literally laying in a giant fish tank. I keep forgetting that they're not in the huge aquarium. So, like, when they flip it over and you can see the fucking top rubber part, it's like, get the fuck out of this fucking thing. It's a Walmart above ground pool. Like, it, they really <laughs> didn't put any money in this. They Well, they put some money into it, but not... Sometimes if you're going to put some money, but not all the money, just don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like... We, you and I probably both done it. I know I've done it. I hell, I ran one. Um, comedy clubs that are like, we want to be a comedy club, but we don't need to have all the frills of like things like sound or like good comfortable seating or like advertising. But let's just do a thing, right? Or how many bars and restaurants do you know that you're like, man, this place could be good if they gave a shit. Besides the one thing they gave a shit about, like, like you go to a restaurant, they're like, we have the best steamed cheeseburger in this fucking one section of a place that does that one thing. You're like, yeah, but imagine if you had other food that was good. Like, just five other items that was good that you cared about. Or, like, service that wasn't fucking rude. Or, like, chairs that didn't stink like a bum's nuts. Like, no, no, that's the ambiance. It's like, no, that's why you're gonna fucking fail. Your aquarium stinks, and no one's gonna go afterwards, because it's literally a giant lobster tank that you got from Big Y. It's also not like in a pass-through place like if it was a transient town you know trenton like if this was yeah. in trenton you might have people be like oh, all right we're, we're going i remember charlotte from trenton let's go check her out this is six hours out of the main way through north carolina the only people who are going are the poor like preschools and shitty homeschool kids in hendersonville north carolina yeah, I'm guessing more homeschool than go to school. I'm guessing homeschool not because they're homeschooling them, because their school is at someone's home. Exactly. Like the whole town has one school <laughs> that is in <laughs> it's at a Miss guy's Nancy's house. house. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that she's Miss Nancy too. Oh, by the way, shout out to the two old black ladies who were sitting up front at the comedy show last night. I appreciate you. I use them as my bar on how people were doing. Dude, they're probably like late fifties, early sixties, and they you when you look at they're like two women that will judge everything. And I'm like, hey, it's a contest thing. You guys mind telling me because they just came for the show. They weren't there to support anybody, and I was, they're like, yeah, we got you. So this one, one white girl goes up first, and I said, uh, how how did everybody like the first comic? And they all kind of cheer. I go, no, no, I ain't asking you. Black, black ladies, <laughs> I kept calling them black ladies. I go, black ladies, what do you think? One lady goes, she okay. The other one goes. Not that good. I'm like, thank you, my ladies. <laughs> like, here's, I, I go, she goes, oh, I'm just saying how I feel. I go, yeah, that's cool. I appreciate it. Her family's here. And they go, oh, shit. You're, my bad. Your kid ain't that good, though. Sorry. And then, <laughs> then another guy goes up, and he's in a taller black guy. And I go, how is he? And she goes, he should have been better. And I'm like, he should have been better. <laughs> that, that, I agree he should have been better. I wish he was better, too. That's a, a good thing. And at one point, this one woman went up, and she was good. And they go, finally, somebody with humor. And I go, yep. And they're just like, I'm like, it's just beautiful, like, the rawness of what they're doing. So shout out to them. And also, thank you for not getting mad when I said, you look like everything I don't like about a Tyler Perry movie. They clapped, and they hugged me afterwards. <laughs> they were enjoying it. It was a lot of fun. So um, It's times like uh, that I, could th I just think to myself, boy, where's Michael Richards when you need him? No Michael Richards. But I'll go into my first little <laughs> quick story from there. Not like not not, not what you're thinking there, but it was close uh, at certain times. I, 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 I did say to one guy who w did look a little Middle Eastern, and I was like, uh, so what's your favorite day, 9-11? <laughs> <It's like, laughs> and he's like, and he has said, it's not my favorite. But he should have said something else in the fence besides that. <laughs> he wasn't saying it's it was top 10. Yeah, it's, it's top 10. But... Last night, um, for those who don't know, I do a, a show um, twice a week uh, um, or two times a month at uh, Comics Mohegan Sun. My friend Frank runs the shows. I host them. It's a bringer thing with a contest, all of this shit going on. But it happens after the first show of the weekend for comics with their national headliner. And uh, so the 8 o'clock show is usually the national headliner. Then 10 o'clock, we go on to whatever. So there's inner there's crossing sometimes of like me being there early enough to see people coming out of the first show or catch some of the first show, um, interactive. So sometimes we get the comic, we got the opening act from last night's show to do some time on our show. Kid Bo McDowell, very funny guy, and he was opening for the headliner. And the headliner happened to be Harlan Williams. And if you don't know who Harlan Williams is, look him up. You do know who he is. You just don't realize you know who he is. Um, Half-baked, 
um, what's it called? Uh, what's the other fucking uh, Dumb and Dumber he was in? He's got a great podcast. He's been around forever. Quirky, weird, odd, whatever. So we, I get there a little bit early and I'm hanging uh, out. Rocket so, Man. Rocket Man. Rocket I don't know. Man. Sorority I Boys. Know those are all good. I don't know if people know those movies. Puppy Dog. Those Dogs. are movies he was in. Dumb and Dumber, everyone knows. Ooh, Spooky Buddies. Spooky Buddies, no one knows. Spooky Buddies could be the name I called those two ladies sitting up front. Um, <laughs> That's the Air Bud movie, but it's hilarious. I like your version better. Spooky Buddies. They're just two ghosts what? who haunt you and roast whatever you're doing. <laughs> oh, you could have fucked Air- her better. Is that the Air Bud where Air Bud wore blackface? <laughs> Spooky Buddies. He's just a chocolate lab now. He just he he joined the Jabberwockies instead of being on a sports team, and now he just does pop and lock moves. It's better like he's so fucking good. Look at his ball pop. It's like that's fucking good shit. But um, so Harlan Williams was there, and if you know Harlan's act, it's odd, it's weird, it's quirky, whatever. Now I'm open for guys who are quote unquote known for one thing, but no one knows what what else they are. And Harlan's one of those guys. I've opened for Gilbert Godfrey. You you probably work with people like this too. That people, when you say it, they go, oh, that guy? I know. I loved him as this one thing. And you're like, well, he's not this one thing on stage. He's other things. Don't expect that. Expect fun. Go in the laugh. But don't expect that. But as like we the got there, we were hanging. Yeah. Bob Saget. 100%. The classic Bob Saget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People going there and expecting Danny Tanner don't get Danny Tanner. Um, not that Harland is like Gilbert or or um, Bob Saget in the filth department, but it's just crazy and different. He'll say wacky stuff, but he's just out. He's an oddball. You know what I mean? That's his thing. So um, it's spooky buddies like the Black Bosom Buddies. Yes, I, I like that too. Well, they have to, they have, but they want to live in a haunted house. Good move, Dominic. Um, they want to live in a haunted house, and they can't afford to rent in a regular house, so they have to blend in with the other ghosts. So they have to go in and be spooky buddies. I like it. But um, so Har- you Harlan, yell at Dominic once, and he redeemed himself. Yes, no, no, I wasn't yelling at him. I was telling him he was great last time, and he did it again. Spooky buddies, even though he didn't name this one, Spooky buddies is already winning title of the show. But um, it's like, we but haven't that, gotten to our new stories just, yet. I got a but also, coming, I think. No, and I'm sure, but also knowing me, I don't even want to know what picture I put up for Spooky Buddies. But I, like, it's, it's just going to be a chocolate lab. It's very simple. <laughs> nope. It's just, the, it's, a, it's a black dog next to the guy who goes, Zippity do da, zippity. Okay. See, that's where, that's where we might have a problem. sunshine in your way. By the way, if Dude, that's not the most racist. You should play that character. You should redo that movie, and you just play the slave. <laughs> just be like, I'm in debt to Frank. Zippity-doo-dow. <laughs> a I tell jokes for absolutely no pay. Plenty of sunshine, feeling real gay. Zippity-doo-dow. zippity a Mr. Frank Bird on my shoulder. <laughs> See? Dude, uh, what, what more do you need? <laughs> well, it would be great that we do it, but I don't. I don't have to. But that's the new. You know, Disney's doing everything woke. I'm just yeah. that guy, but I'm doing the voice, and they're all like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, wait, what? what? It's the voices of the character." Oh, did you think it was racist? No, wow. a white guy can play it too. It just happens yeah. to be the voice. And then, and then wait go, till you uh... see my other character from the Wizard of Oz, Chinese Scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, why are we hours conversing with flowers? Oh, I got no brain. Oh. Do, 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 do. That's a fun part. Um, yeah, I, I love doing the black voice. Anyway, one of my favorite. <laughs> Singing that song like that, I've done that in like post office lines. People turn around like, Zippity do that. There's something about that do when you do that part with like that Louis, An- Louis Armstrong. I said Louis Anderson, Louis Armstrong. <laughs> do it for people. I think we did a whole rape episode about this song. We did. It was a while back. There was something about it. I think he was letting us know it was pretty racist, and he didn't have to tell us. But just we all love know. it that much that that's why I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard Pat do this. If I throw him the ball, he yeah, can pick it's, it up, it's and one he knows of my, the whole song. <laughs> yeah, well, how do you not? If you're my age whatever, it was before there was entertainment for children, they would just take a black guy and go, this will make you laugh. <laughs> you should just be like, Bill we're Cosby. taking our story back. Yeah. <laughs> Like they would just put on the more be a fat guy. <laughs> that was the con- that was 
fucking what's it called? Fat Albert. I'm fat. I'm black. <laughs> Here, it's pretend hilarious. you can read a book. I got diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the so I'm I'm sitting outside of, in the club area. There's a whole restaurant, and inside the restaurant, you walk into a club. And so we're in the outside part. The restaurant's all loud and everything, uh, big area, and people start filing out early like the show ends usually the first show ends around like 9 15 9 20. it's like 8 50 and a good group of people are walking out of this place and i'm like oh what's going on here and then you it was a whole bunch of white women and there's about tw- at the end about 25 of them all standing around in a circle and you're like oh somebody just did something hilarious <laughs> yeah i'm thinking right away oh fuck i should have a lot of times i'll go inside to go watch and i'm like fuck i should have gone inside and watched and i didn't and as I go, as I'm watching, me and Deanna Frank and, and, and Dan, the uh, manager there, we're all kind of standing there, and they start wilding, and we can hear them. They're like, he's nothing, nothing like he is on TV. I mean, you'd think he would have been fine. And one lady, one lady out loud just goes, you would think he would ask what we like to laugh about and then do jokes about that. And I'm like, okay, now I'm perked up because you're retarded. If you want to know how comedy works. who's retarded, that's not how anything in life works. I thought right away, how bad would it be to be married to this woman, be a child of this woman, to work with this woman? Anyone who says that, and she wasn't laughing or kidding. She was like, you would think they would ask what we like and then do that. That's the bitch that goes to a restaurant and then when they say that we we specialize in Chinese food, and she goes, I'd like grilled cheese. And like, well, we don't do grilled cheese. She goes, well, I don't know why you can't. Do you have bread? They're like, well, not really. I mean, kind of. Well, I'm sure you can go get bread and get cheese. Like, well, well, then why the fuck did you come here? Why did you go to the non-grilled cheese shop? You fucking want grilled cheese. Why did you see a thing that said Harlan Williams, and you walk in on a whim, because we heard them saying that they were walking around, and they decided to go, show. it takes two seconds. They make these now. They call fucking phones. You go on it. You go Harlan Williams, and you look up what it is. You go, I don't know what that is, or even read on the site. It'll say like you know all ages or whatever it is. You can find out in two seconds if you're gonna like it. And also, and I hate to use this as a uh, a way to tell if you should go to a show or not. Sit there and think to yourself: Have I ever been fun? Have I ever had a, been a good time? Have I ever gone anywhere and I watch people's joy go up? Or have I seen it go down? And you know that in your life. If you walk in, listen, as much as I am a dummy and all that stuff, when I go places, I see people going, oh, good, it's fun guy. This guy's going to say crazy shit. We're gonna... Sometimes like I might get too crazy, and we'll see him get in trouble, whatever. But I know that I, with conversation and things, I do that. This bitch right here and her friends, certain the gaggle of hoes, they weren't going to be having a good time at all. But they're complaining. And at one point, I heard one person go, we should ask for our money back. And I can hear one of the managers walking by going, absolutely not. Like, even when he caught it in your shot, which is like, you, you chose not to go into a show. No, you chose, nothing happened in the show. It was packed, too. Like, there was like two, on a Thursday night for them, 200 people. That's a big show for a, th- for a Thursday. Usually it's like, literally, Thursdays are usually their weaker show, like 50 to 75, maybe 100. They had a big crowd there for that guy. And these people all just like stormed right the hell out. But it did look bad. Because like when everyone's just walking out, they're like, "Why? What's happening?" Like, "Oh, we all walked out of the Harlan Williams show." It's like, "What's he doing in there? Is he doing a Michael Richards?" Because that's my first thought was like, "Did he go off? Why would they walk out with this nature?" So I went in afterwards. I talked to the sound guy, and I'm like, "What? What did he do?" And he goes, "He just he made a joke where he said the word Trump. He didn't even do a joke about it. He like he goes, he used the word Trump like I to Trump something, and they're like Trump, and then they got up and said, but he didn't even say Donald Trump, Trump, Trump." Just Trump. Not for us. That's bad. Fuck you. That's, That's insane. Real rough. It's insane that you can't. And I don't. I don't we, you know, we, we don't really do crazy politics on here or anything like that. But as much as what you think, it, we've gotten so weird as a world. First of all, that's a fucking power. And I, it, it, the fact that Donald Trump at the, is can he's just fucking Voldemort. Thing, it, it's, it really is, man. It, it's insane. But the other people, so is Joe Biden. Like even I mean because it really the people like that like don't want to hear that shit. They're it's crazy that somebody would get up. You went to a it proves you have no sense of humor though. If you if one word can ruin your good time, if a mention of a person, like okay, if you go to a, par- a birthday party and a woman like you like you're going on a date and the and so the girl's like, hey, we're going to this party. It's my mom's friend's birthday. Whatever, we're gonna go there, pop in for a little bit, pop out. You're like, oh great, like hey. If you do that in small talk with her and she brings up her like ex-husband, move the subject. 
She gets real fucking down. She talks. She might bring it up because someone says something. It gets weird. Don't ask her about marriage or whatever. Besides that, you're fine. You're like, I was going to ask that. Why would I bring that up? It's a birthday party. It has nothing to do with that, but whatever. But all of a sudden, someone goes, so have you talked to George? And all of a sudden, Bleh, fucking George. Da, 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 da. That's what Trump's become. He's become like the person you can't mention because he ruined everyone's day at a comedy show or go Biden. It's so fucking dumb. You went to go watch Goofball. Harlan Williams is the guy, if you don't know, in Half-Baked, who's getting shower raped, and he talks to a, and there's a squirrel master. It's the, He talks to a horse. It's the dumbest shit ever. What is this? Is, this is why men do women better, Mao? Well, why do, why, what's why when do women better now? Wait, I think Terry's having a stroke. Um, this is why men do do women better now. Women? I think he means by no, no. I think he meant to say women. He's probably just driving or doing work and typing fast. This is why men. Okay, do women I thought maybe women like, was a we new are term doing for trans. trans. No, well, I mean, there's nothing woo about that. Should be a boo man. Boo man, boo man, chew, Fu man, chew. Anyway, who's the piece of shit in this story? Is it the women for getting mad and walking out? It's their right. They went to a comedy show. You can walk out. Whatever. But they, the complaining is a little much outside. I don't know if they were disruptive inside. I'm sure they were. If they were acting like this and they walked out, not they were loud, but they probably were like, oh, this isn't funny, like saying that shit out loud. You know, is it Harlan Williams for not asking the, every person in the audience what they like and then trying to cater his entire act that he's been working on for his whole life that made him famous and shit to the point where he's at a casino and people go see him? Should he have stopped and catered his act for them completely? Is is it the club for not refunding the money? Is it people in general for getting upset at dumb little things? And now I don't know 100 percent the Trump thing is true. That was said to me, but the guy who said it, I know for a fact he also doesn't pay attention to shows. It might not have been that, but is it people that get upset about a name or a word or if you mention anything, religion, any is it people that fucking can't fucking get over one thing for the bigger scheme of having a good time? You know what I mean? It's like it's nuts. Like a lot of times when I'm joking around with stuff and people will be like Hey, how's your day going? And I'm, I'm the kind of guy that will say stupid shit like, oh, it's not bad, except for when I got AIDS. No, I find that funny to say to somebody. And then they'll be like, ah, you said AIDS, now I can't. Like, first of all, AIDS never affected your day. So why are you mad they said it? It's just the same way as going, it's great, Bob. How's the weather with you? Or like, who gives a shit? It's just something to say. It doesn't give a fuck. What's up, Scott Fitzpatrick? How are you, sir? Um, It doesn't fucking matter. Who is the piece of shit, or is it me, for using this as the first story because Charlotte and Stingray won't have babies? Um, it's it's not you. <laughs> like, Charlotte should have the babies. We might have been able to come out the gate swinging a little faster, but that's okay. It's early in the morning, so I like this story to ease. Well, first of all, it. me singing Zippity Doo Dah is the fastest we're coming out of a gate of all time. I uh, went black yeah. voice fucking five minutes in. You're welcome, uh, whoa, Friday. Whoa, 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 whoa. easy. No, easy not, not, not to you. I'm not critiquing not you. you. I'm not I'm saying to the people. You. The people I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> it's it's not it's not the women for getting mad that he said the word Trump. Uh right. I like to think it's really important in life to wake up in the morning and decide I'm going to ruin today. And then to blame the ruining on the day uh, on anybody other than yourself. So, no, don't just be like, ah, it's a comedy show. Let's go in with an open mind. You should go into every comedy show going, where can I find the problem here? How can I take the attention away from Harlan and make it about me? And uh, honestly, that's that's kind of the secret to life. So it's not them. For me, it's Harlan. You know, when those bitches got up when you said Trump, go in. You just let them walk out and let the reason be that you said Trump instead of being like, he called me a dumb cunt because I he said the word Trump and I thought he meant Trump but not Trump. Like, go in. Pat, if a bunch of white women went to leave your show, you're gonna engage or not? Well, yes, but also because my audience only has so many people where half that would be half the audience leaving. <laughs> I think because the big was so big, he probably in, in the big scheme of things, he didn't even notice them leaving. Probably just thought it was hustle and bustle. You know what I mean? Like I would because I, I would yell something dumb. But if him, he, I, he's so goofy and weird. Like a guy, you we all know guys who have acts that don't involve the crowd really or whatever. They don't even really notice, or they've trained themselves to not even pay attention. He might not even notice that they fucking did that. But you're right. If it was me, I would have started it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But just to be clear, it's great to to ruin a day and make it about everything but you. 
and your mental state. Yeah, but that, but then they're also doing that too. So is, I guess I should, in that in that mindset, I should allow them to ruin the day by getting up because we're both looking to ruin the day. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm being facetious about the. Way. Well, I know, and I was oh, leaning okay, into cool, the cool. I just want to make sure to go with you. But if, if, if I'm going to go, with the, if we're going to go with that that mindset, we have to go. Oh, that now I and now we become friends because we were both trying to ruin each other's day, and then that's how the love story starts. That's how every love story I've been involved started. Yes. <laughs> War and then you pay him for money and yell at him that you're tight, you're so tight. I run the old Trojan horse where it's like, no, I'll destroy you from the oh, inside. God. Now I gotta learn stuff. What's the 18th Amendment? And women can vote. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Come on, Terry. Yeah. First of all, he wrote women men. He wrote womb men. <laughs> now he won't spell their name right. He will take away their rights. Terry's really fucking going after uh, the females today. Terry and I are seeing eye to eye. Yeah, well, <laughs> Who do you, do you think that piece when of shit is? Sweet gay love. The piece of shit in the story is the women. Stay. Stay. Because if you're going to be a white woman, if you're going to be a real white woman in 2024, you can't just walk out with a little bit of information. A real, true, complaining Karen, if you will. I don't like the terms that's been played out too much, but a Karen, if you will. If you're really going to be that, you stay for the whole thing, you take fucking notes. And then you write nasty fucking reviews. You fucking make a stupid little uh, TikTok where you talk about, here's how my day was ruined. You guys ever heard of Harlan Williams? More like horrible man Williams. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> and then they would just do their whole stupid thing, complain about it, get a bunch of views, and then get the attention they so want. By walking out of the comedy club and just standing in a giant restaurant where there's karaoke and tons of people and things going up, you're not getting that thing you want. You thought by standing out there and talking out loud that people would hear, I just heard it. Yeah, you got 12 people to hear it on the POS morning show. But besides that, you didn't get what you wanted. You're not even good at being a fucking shitty white woman. Do it better. You know what I mean? Learn from others. Fucking stay. Watch videotape it, you know, stand there like it's a barbecue and they're black, watch the fucking thing, call the cops during the show from the phone, my ears have been assaulted, do all that while staying in there, make them remove you, be the white woman of 2024, because white women are, you want to know why trans people are being accepted? Because they're better in public than white women. That's why they're being accepted. If they were just as loud and stupid, then we wouldn't let them anywhere. I'm going to have to contradict you on that point. All right. I thought I was helping you. You like the yelling at women thing. I went with you. Yeah, yeah. I like yelling at women, but let's be honest. Okay. Behaving well in public isn't exactly what the trans community is known for. Well, there's other communities that don't do that either. No. So we let no, them no. and stuff. Yeah, but they're okay. They can, like, rap and shit. Okay. I wasn't. I meant. I meant I, 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 you're right. I meant them. Anyway, um, no, no, no. What did you okay. mean? What, what can you? No, no. I was do? trying to make a joke. I couldn't. Think of one. Well, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. I meant them too. <laughs> I was trying to quickly contradict you. And go ah! And I was like, nope. That's still on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I I think the reason they were assembled in the lobby is they didn't get the attention they wanted leaving the show. So now they got to stand there and bitch until somebody gives them the attention they want. The key is if they really want their money back, the way you do it is by making them remove you. Right? That's how you get the your removal's money. Removal's awesome. Yeah, and that's like the manager walk by walking by going, you're not getting your money back. That's how you get your money back. You don't leave until they go, we'll refund you. And you go, and I want comp to the 10 o'clock show with Frank and Pat. The best one to do is if you plan it right, because you can get the wording down and this can work. You have you tell your friend, hey, get your phone out. Because I'm not done to this shit. I'm fucking hurt. We're making this viral. So then you you start complaining. This is fucking you start out loud being annoying to the point where manager has to walk over, mm-hmm. and then the manager will walk over and say something to the effect of, "It's like, uh, ma'am, you're ruining the show for everyone." She goes, "Oh, I'm ruining the show for everyone. I'm ruining the show for everyone. How about this guy for not being funny? You might think you want to be funny at a comedy show. So if he doesn't have to be funny, I don't have to be quiet. Maybe that's the deal. We should find. And then she could go off on her thing with that. Mm-hmm. I know you are one of my shit that women love. And could throw that out loud there and then walk out with that. And no matter what, that would become a thing. It gets viral. And the next time Harlan's at a show, people jokingly are yelling, 
you know, you know, it's like, I have to leave. And he has a bit about it and it helps him out. And then later on, that lady becomes the Harlan Williams lady. And then five years later, they're on the view together. Married with kids. Married. Mrs. The Horrible only, Williams. The only thing I would add to your plan, because I love it, is you need a real attention getter to start your rant. Other than I'm not I'm ruining the show. So I would start out by saying something along the lines of he raped me with how unfunny he was. And then, like, you get everybody to pay attention to you. You know? Yeah. Speaking of things that get attention, um, mm-hmm. just side of when you think of it, those black ladies from the show last night, they were up front. At one point, they were just, like, smiling at each other, being all weird. I go, wait, are you old ladies on Molly? And everybody kind of laughed, and I go, BLM, black ladies on Molly. And everybody's like, hooray. Right. Oh, like, yeah, that's our new thing. So we need to I mean, make those would... bumper stickers, Bobby. We need those. <laughs> Question mark? Black ladies on Molly. We need to come up with like 10 different BLMs and then just sell them underneath real small print is what you want it to be. I, hey, I'm on board. I, I like to think that there's a MAGA guy who's about to hit, like throw a brick through your window and then he sees the punchline. He's like, oh, <laughs> comedy. And then walks Dude, away. I was thinking about that. Because at least that they have a, when, a sense of humor. But that, when, yeah, uh, the other day when I brought up, I wanted on the POS, the one on um, Patreon, go check it out, POS show for the evenings. Um, the when we I said I wanted to do the two bumper stickers, one says Black Lives Matter and the other one says Black Lives Matter with a question mark, and you were like, or just have a question mark. If we just sold a question mark, you could change everyone's back of their car. dude. Make America great again, like with a question mark is great, but the best one would be baby on board with a question, like you don't know. <laughs> like Ooh, baby on board, I like, like that. you don't even know like it's that. back there, dude. That's a, or coexist. <laughs> Yeah, question marks definitely. Yeah, it's you. You just sell the question mark. Exactly. I my kid. And it could be. I love my cocker doodle. My son's an honor student? Question mark. It's or two, just that you know the stick figures with the mom, the dad, and the three kids, and you put a question mark. People are like, what? Like, does fuck? that mean one of them is trans? Does that mean one of them didn't live? Does that mean you don't know if this is your family? What? The, I'm what more intrigued be, yeah, than yeah. ever. There's just a BLM. Black people love Maury underneath it. <laughs> you make the sticker. You don't write what it is, but you just put a picture of Maury Povich. Like, wait, what? <laughs> just, wait a second. You know, <laughs> what is the message they're trying to put out here? <laughs> Is that how they all find their fathers? <laughs> it's not your kids. You can run away. <laughs> all right, what do you got? Uh, I got a, a sports story. Yeah, sports. Um, a heartwarming moment turns bitter. Coach's okay. controversial remarks mar inspirational game. In an unexpected turn of events that has captured the nation's attention, what began as a heartwarming story of inclusion and sportsmanship took a disheartening twist during a post-game press conference when the community of... Oh, God damn it. It's so hard to read on this. Hang on. No worries. You were doing great, bud. You are doing great. Yeah, I know. I got to the point where my camera was in the middle of my screen. I couldn't see words. The community of Springfield... The community of Springfield was initially uplifted when local high school basketball coach John Harrison made the decision to play Michael Thompson, a beloved team member with Down syndrome, in the final game of the season. Oh, yeah. However, the joy and pride felt by spectators and the team members alike were overshadowed by Coach Harrison's subsequent remarks. The game held last Friday was a closely contested battle against Springfield High's longtime rival, the Eastwood Eagles. In a move that drew cheers from the stands, Coach Harrison sent Thompson onto the court in the last five minutes of the game. Thompson, who had been an enthusiastic and dedicated member of the team, despite not playing in previous matches, seized the moment. He scored a crucial basket, bringing the crowd to its feet, in a standing ovation for his achievement and spirit. The game concluded with Springfield High narrowly losing to Eastwood, but the focus remained on Thompson's participation and the powerful message of inclusivity it sent. The narrative took a sharp and unfortunate turn during the team's post-game press conference when Coach Harrison responded to a question about the game's outcome, referred to Thompson's play as the reason the team lost, using the term retarded boy in his explanation. The coach's comments immediately sparked outrage and disbelief among attendees. (laughs) 
quickly <laughs> spreading to social media and national news outlets. The Springfield School I District. I hope this is the fake story because if it's not, you're the great. The, the, you finding this is amazing. Issued a statement oh. condemning Harrison's remarks, emphasizing that such language and attitudes have no place in education or athletics. The statement also highlighted the district's commitment to fostering an inclusive environment for all students. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, oh. Community members, parents, and advocacy groups have rallied in support of Thompson and his family, praising his courage and condemning the coach's insensitive language. A petition demanding Coach Harrison's resignation has garnered thousands of signatures in crayon, <laughs> reflecting widespread disapproval of his actions. In an interview, Thompson's parents expressed their heartbreak over the incident, but emphasized the pride in their son's achievements and the positive impact he had on his team community. Michael showed us all what true sportsmanship looks like. They stated, we hope this unfortunate situation can be a learning opportunity to promote understanding and respect for all individuals, regardless of their abilities. When reached for comment, Coach Harrison's response was, the retarded kid had 17 turnovers. What do you want me to say? Pat, who's the piece of shit in this story? It's got to be you. This can't be real. This can't be the greatest story of all times. It's got to be fake. I know you tried. There's no way this is real. There's no way no, that this isn't on. What? You're it's telling real? me the Eastview Eagles aren't real. No, I'm asking that Coach Harrison said the <laughs> retarded boy lost the game for us. There's no way that happened. And this guy would just keep getting interviewed after in this day and age. He'd be lit on fire if he said that at all. I, I love you. But it was too early <laughs> to try to sneak one in with the retarded, the retarded boy on defense really blew. <laughs> it can't be real. Is it real? Don't find me the article. No, don't. You're just gonna find me the school. <laughs> you're not. It's not gonna be the art. Yeah, the school might be real. Yeah, that's the school. <laughs> but that's not the not the. I want. I want the press conference. I will. I will have to. I mean, they definitely don't have the press conference online. <laughs> It's somewhere. It's somewhere in the darkest of webs, if it's real. But who's the beast in this story? It's not Coach Harrison. If, this, if I'm going to take this story at face value, it's not Coach Harrison. If Coach Harrison, if, if he really did say this, if this is how he speaks, first of all, where was it? It's, it's, it's said he said he was in school, but is this like, what, Missouri or something? Uh, I exited out of the article. I apologize. No, no, no problem. I think it I'm was just guessing. Illinois. Illinois. Okay. It, it, it feels more down south, but. <laughs> Because like that, that retarded could be boy, he knows good. Like you know, that I mean, that feels very water boyish. But like, if that's true, he should. And I don't mean this in the disrespect, but if he's gonna let one of them play, he should be allowed to talk about them anytime he wants. <laughs> because he's doing out of support. You put him in a close game, like a game that yeah. they won. You know what I mean? He didn't just. It wasn't fifty to nothing, and he put him in. You know what I mean? He put him in a game where he didn't he cared more about this kid than he did. So he calls him the retarded boy. So, and you're gonna take away all the good feeling that someone's doing because they don't say the word that you like. Because forever, in Coach Harrison's mind, that's what this guy was. He was the retarded boy. He's not saying it out of hate, he's like, oh, and the goddamn <laughs> retarded boy. He's saying the retarded boy. He probably also says the black kid. When he puts in the black kid, he's, it sounds like Coach Harrison is the kind of kind of the fat kid, the gay kid. He says that shit, but guess what? He's the coach of this team, and he's getting them all to come together to cheer and be on there. So it's not him in any way. Because if that, I I'm getting sick and tired of the, the word police being out there. Yeah, maybe you could say that's harsh. Guess who wasn't upset? The retarded guy at all because he got a chance to play basketball he doesn't care what you call him he's been called way worse by people who did it in a mean way so he knows that's who he is but guess guess what he did get called into the game and that's what really fucking matters so the piece of shit is people who get mad at that we need that more often like you ever watch the celtics play the guy that guy named Derek white he sometimes tries to grow hair but when he does it only starts like way back here like this and he and charles barkley and Shaq have made fun of him when every time he comes on with the receding hair like yo man just shave your head whatever i, I was the coach of the celtics i'd be like 
Yeah, and then the retarded boy, Derek White, came in because he's like, wait, well, he's growing his hair. And it'd be, I, I should be allowed to say that because he's growing his hair like he has special needs. It should be okay to say. Who gives a fuck? He's still playing Derek White. Derek White still makes millions upon millions of dollars. Call me whatever you want. If the young, if a young boy wants to go in there and get his one chance in life, that when later in life, when he's being retarded and he's bagging groceries in a small little town or whatever it is, Missouri or Illinois, whatever, and people are like, I remember you. You were the retarded boy who lost the game for us. He goes, yeah, I was, because he's happy. <laughs> because he was, got the play. So it's the people that give a fuck about the words and not about the actions. Is anyone else putting this kid anywhere? Is anyone else including him and stuff? Probably not. But guess who did? Coach Harrison, a hero. That, you know, I, I was kind of against you initially, but I have had that coach. The guy who, like you said, uh, is angry, is, isn't is going to play it right, but that's life. Because, you know, your manager at work isn't going to not call you retarded when you drop the fries. But he's still your manager at work. That's the thing. If he fires you for being retarded or doesn't play you because you're retarded, then he's an asshole. But if he's acknowledging you're retarded while still keeping you employed and gets you care every day, then hey, so what? It's just the way he talked, but he's still taking care of you. <laughs> did you see scott's comment it made me chuckle i apologize i no, got distracted I didn't, uh, i'm sorry was the r word his name todd read todd okay <laughs> it's todd what's todd short for <laughs> read todd it's like well, we I don't think that's how that works ray wait, wait, tard like, those, those are all fun <laughs> Lots of options. Who do you, uh, th- you, who do you think me? the piece of shit is, though? My, I think the piece of shit's you. Let me share my screen. Oh, I was. You had me reading Scott Fitzpatrick. I know it's called the old misdirect. Scott Fitzpatrick, get your ass kicked. There you go. A heartwarming Boom. moment turns bitter. No, you made this up just now. It's so blank on the outsides. What I, I can't see. I gotta make it big so I can see where this is from because I don't believe you. You're good enough to do that. Who's Bill Pueblo? Is this on Medium? Did you just make this article up? Yeah, this is on Medium. <laughs> I write on Medium. Fuck you. AI I made don't... a Medium thing about a retard. Is that on there? AI wrote it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's on, in the public now. So we'll see if that gets any traction. <laughs> <laughs> Who's but Bill Pueblo? <laughs> yeah, like that that's, my, that's my pseudonym. I couldn't remember which I know those I bubbles hadn't. in the corner. That's what I write my comedy articles on. New one coming out soon. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> but um well that was certainly our most in-depth <laughs> did i make the medium article while you were saying it was false and i just let you go on a rant about the coach being the piece of shit maybe <laughs> but no i didn't call the coach the piece of shit so you didn't even listen how dare you if i ignore scott and i ignore your article so <laughs> ignore my points i said the coach is a hero i just said that guy was a goddamn hero yeah he is a hero <laughs> Ugh. Oh man! Nice. Well, we yeah, came out that. the gate fry firing. We had zippity doo da, and then we had. Yeah. If, if I, I, I will so be, many people. I, I, I will be honest. The the chat, the AI I used would not get as specific with the quotes as I wanted it to. It was yeah. just supposed to be like, "Come on, man! The retarded kid had seventeen turnovers. He was <laughs> drooling on the ball. None of our players wanted to even touch it. He was dribbling down to the court." Exactly. The only <laughs> dribbling he did was out of his mouth. <laughs> but by the way, it for all the people out there, I know there's, we we know there's a lot of them who get so I'm so tired of this woke shit. You better be loving this show because we opened it up out of the gate. Which is, not that we're trying to not be that. We're just it's like we. I think our show really the reason why we're bringing up these stories is kind of like who we are. Like people are like, well, Pat, Bobby, if you just we're a little cleaner or did this maybe your podcast would be bigger maybe you'd be moving farther in this or that's like but this is what we love this is we have last night when i was at the show at comics and uh there was another comedian who's friends with matt sloan when matt was on wednesday and this kid jeff came up to me and he said hey man i watched your show when matt was on and he's like your show is awesome i love the format and he goes you know who's great bobby tamburo and frank goes ah fuck him but anyway so- <laughs> <laughs> it was very funny, but my DI was dying. He's like, <laughs> but 
the guy was like, I love what you guys do. He goes, Bobby, just say whatever. You guys lean into it. You both go hard with whatever. It was great. It, people enjoy it. We're not everyone's cup of tea, but we're, we're the, who else is covering the retarded basketball? Who's doing zippity doo dah? Who's calling black women stuff? And we make fun of white women too. So it's not like we're just we're not racist. We're just idiots who say what we see and we use oh, whatever I, words we got. To quote my grandfather, I don't have a oh, favorite. No. I hate everything equally. <laughs> oh, a lot like, of grandfathers say other stuff, and I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't gonna. <laughs> there goes our YouTube. <laughs> Quote my grandfather's favorite song, Goop, there it is. I thought you knew. (laughs) Um, But for what it's worth, if we do have any woke people watching and the 12 people in the audience right now, uh, my friend Zach Hicks, who's a Down syndrome activist, is watching on Instagram, and I am going to get a lecture after this show. So just so you guys know. How is he an activist for it? He goes and gives speeches and stuff about like equality and rights. No, no, he has it. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I want that gig. So Can is it going to be a hilarious lecture? Yes. But am I going to be lectured as soon as we get off of here? Yes. Bobby, can we no. can we get booked on that? <laughs> oh. No, we can't. Can that be our tour? Do the place is <laughs> back to say the audience the is text. just heads? <laughs> oh, it's going to be so fucking good. All right. Normally we'll move we see 250, but today we can do 125 because of headroom. Nice. <laughs> We'll move off that and get this a fun story, a fun interaction in life. Customer pulls a gun on Burger King employee after getting a discounted breakfast. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm not making this one up. This is real. And Bobby, it's one of your old stopping grounds. And police, police in Northeast Ohio are asking the public for a lo- help, helping help locate a Burger King customer caught on camera pointing a gun at a drive through employee after the worker tried to give a man a discount. So and it was morning too. It was around 9 a.m. This guy pulls up. He orders his food. He gets like sausage and egg croissant, fuckle, some of the French toast sticks, all of that. Now, this guy is unaware that there is a promotion that week where if you get like the sausage or the sausage, egg biscuit, whatever, you get two for four instead of the normal like six, five, four dollars each. So when the guy goes eight dollars, the guy goes, What? It's supposed to be like eleven dollars. He's like, yeah, man. Well, sorry. I, I don't know. Um, it's cheaper because we're doing a thing. I don't want to fucking hear it. What the fuck? I don't want to fucking. The, the guy's like, dude, man, I don't know why you're so mad. But the guy, like, so the guy, like, drives right off, turns around the parking lot, gets out of the car, and then pulls out a gun and points it at the driver window. First of all, I like the fact that he didn't want to hold up the line. So he got out. That's, that's a <laughs> respectable like, person. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to let everybody else get their shitty food that you fucked up, but we're going to solve this problem. Not only that, he's also mad that in this economy you're trying to fucking make less yeah. money. He's upset about a lot of fucking things. Now, he did get caught on camera. They are in search for him now. It's pretty blurry, but he's in this shitty beat-up white car in Ohio, and he's probably the guy whose car smells like really bad breakfast meats because he's driving around, getting pissed off, trying to find a place that will not give him a discount. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> sure a shitty beat-up beat white car is going to really stand out in Northeast Ohio. <laughs> No injuries were reported in the crime reported to the department by the Burger King employee. Um, the suspect is seen standing on I'm sorry, a black vehicle besides a white car, so it wasn't his, pointing a firearm at the employee inside. Um, so and the employee, in his big quote, he just goes, I don't know why you want to pay more money. I guess he was about to just say, like, this guy's so bad. I was like, I don't, what am I doing wrong? Because if you have, we talked about management before, we're saying the coach Harris and people accepting you. Have you ever worked for a manager? It doesn't matter why something happened. He's just mad at you because you didn't do the pilot. Probably dicks that probably happened all the time. You know what I mean? Like, we don't care about it. That's the right way. It's not the dicks way, whatever. I'm sure the manager's like, if the customer is unhappy, we're unhappy. Like, so you want me to charge him more? What do you want me to do? Well, I don't, he, the customer's always right. Like, so I was supposed to not give the discount. And then someone else finds out I don't give that. And then they, what do I do? And they're like, I don't give a fuck. Just be right. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's that kind of yeah. shit. This guy's living under they pressure. They just yell at you with no solution. He, the whole interaction was this. So he got, he, here's what he got. He got two sausage, egg, and cheese croissants, a sausage okay. biscuit, and hash browns, which came with the eight bucks. Do you know how fucking pumped that would be? Because if I'm getting that much food, that means I'm either high or I had a tough yep. one the night before, or I'm just starving. I'm like, fuck it. I don't want to eat like shit, but I want to fucking just eat this. And then I'll tell my, that's one of those meals. When you're eating that, you're going, I start dieting tomorrow. This is the goodbye. 
You know what I mean? You're if first of all, Burger King underrated breakfast. I don't think it's great, but it's underrated. Like it's not a bad breakfast. They're the one of the few ones that do a croissant good in a breakfast sandwich. I don't like that it gets all flaky on you and shit, but they rock that well. If you go biscuit or your regular sandwich, they're not doing great. Their sauce where is else, great anyway. But where else are you what? getting French toast sticks? Where else are you yeah. getting French toast sticks? Fast food. I mean, besides like anywhere in a cafeteria when you're a child at school, then Burger King, which they understand. Like, if you were, if your last good memory was dipping shit into syrup in third grade, we got you. Come here, Burger yeah. King. We'll give you a crown. Yeah. We'll make you like it's the like, kid who are you for a Harrison. Disney adult or was 11 <laughs> years old the last time you had serotonin? It's the same thing. Right? Yeah. I don't Trading know if I actually like donut. for a Burger King crown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in. But when I eat them, I smile. Right. Well, I don't think you're gonna smile. Because that's just gas from all the fucking sausages. You're going to feel okay on the inside. I'm trying to explain to him that we had a promotion going on. And he's like, and it's cheaper. He starts cussing me out and getting all loud. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know what you want to do. I don't know why you want to pay more money. The guy said, the customer sped away. And then he got out and he got his gun and pointed at them. That's, that guy's just out of the loose. Who's the piece of shit in this story? Is it the man for overreacting about a discount? I guess he just feels like everything is lies. I'm guessing this can't be just what we're reading. A lot more has gone into this man's day. Something else that obviously happened where he's just fed up. He's just tired of lies. You know what I mean? That That's what this sounds like. It's not about the discount. He's just tired of being fucking lied to. Terry Nee already saying the man's wife is a piece of shit. <laughs> Terry's on fire with women today. I already see that in there. It's me. Oh, hey, V, how are you, man? I think Terry um, and I had similar evenings. <laughs> <laughs> You're, and you're right. The customer is usually the POS, but the customer I don't think is the POS in this one, V. Good morning, by the way. I don't really feel, um, and the man did pull a gun. You're right, but he pulled the gun respectfully away from the window. He did pull his gun in his own time. He got into the parking lot. He was out there. He wasn't, he wasn't obviously probably going to shoot. He was just like, I'm so fucking mad. I'm going to, he probably didn't have bullets in the gun, to be honest. If, if this, I mean, I guess money's no object for this guy, so maybe he does have bullets. I was going to say maybe he doesn't have the, the beat of a car. But if he's willing to drop 11 instead of 8 on fucking shitty sandwiches, not pumped. Like, you know how pumped I am when I go to a McDonald's once in a while, and they're like, we're still doing the two for four with shit? I'm like, you're doing the two for four? Well, but I guess my whole day changed. I thought I was getting a yeah. fucking double quarter pounder meal. Now I guess I'm getting two two for fours, and now I've got, now I've got $8 worth of gross, and I'm taking a nap for a week. But I'm pumped. Yeah, as you say, I'm, I'm going to binge like, yeah. watch a show now. Yeah, that's my day. Yeah, I'm very excited about the fact that I spent less money, even though I shouldn't have spent any money. Because this is a terrible purchase no matter what, but I'm happy I spent less. It's that girl math where you're like, I wasn't I was gonna spend twenty dollars on breakfast, but now I, I obviously made out because I only spent twelve. It's like, well, you shouldn't have spent shit. But like in your head, you're like, Well, I was gonna spend it anyway, so it's the money, it's all that kind of shit. So is it the guy? I don't I'm not sure if it's him, it's a piece of shit. Is it the employee for trying to argue it at all? Listen, I appreciate this guy. This is a good employee. This kid should be respected because he was saying, Hey, sir. Just letting you know it's a discount, whatever. You know, sorry. I don't know why you're upset. You wouldn't got mad. He was like, you didn't. You, well, we hear too much in fast food things. Remember, the guy didn't pull out a gun yet. So you could say if he had a gun, he didn't say anything back. He didn't pull a gun out yet till he drove away and got in the parking lot, then pointed at him. So at this point, he doesn't know he has a gun. And usually, what happens when we're watching videos on World Star and all that shit? Right away, the employee, fuck you, then you're a piece of shit. No, the guy was like, hey man, I just don't understand why you're upset. I just want to, I don't know why you're cursing. I'm just trying to explain to you why it's less money. And he tried to be a good guy with this. He's not the piece of shit for, for doing that in my mind because he's just doing his job. Is it Burger King for running a promotion that, I mean, overall, all that food, only $3 saved? That doesn't even sound like a big deal. I don't even know what the deal was, but Burger King, maybe he's give up on breakfast. Wendy's is trying it too. No one's going there for your fucking breakfast. Focus more on getting the, the lunch better again. You really dropped the ball anyway. Do more than crowns. How about don't have fake King Jesus as your mascot? How about we just take a step, step back. Maybe make this guy your mascot. The guy with the gun, toting the... If, if on a picture, do... fuck Jack in a Box. Yeah, a guy holding a gun and a sausage sandwich, I'm going there. I do think kind of like we do with jerseys, you know, when you retire them and hang them up in the rafters, we should do that with the burger count king crown the greatest moment has been happened with somebody wearing that burger king crown and it happened on yeah. an airplane we it is time I, to retire the crown yes what you do is you take you change the name from burger king 
and you now you do it with this guy in the front being in the car like that, and you change the name to Car Jack King. So it's just carjacking, and he's out there. He's got they they run up to you. They go, you get a gun in your face and go, here's your sausage sandwich. You're like, ah, you're fucking gonna take it. You go, give me the money, and then they give you because you're getting fake rob, but you're really just paying for your food. I kind of like that, but I think we need to take it a different direction. Okay, burger democracy. Oh, so we do a whole thing where like the guy with the gun is now the new mascot, and he's overthrowing the king. So the first thing he does is it's just him breaking in and throwing all the iced tea into Lake Erie, and then slowly it becomes burger democracy. Because you can't tell me people wouldn't go buy a democracy burger. Tastes like freedom. They they definitely would. Trump be behind that one. Uh Oh, everyone stop watching. By the way, Jim doesn't realize that that's called the burp. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, literally has a name. So who's yeah, the piece dude, of shit? By the way, V, real quick, you are correct because I literally am like, if we usually end at 10, if we end at 9.30, I can get the Burger King for some <laughs> breakfast. Like, I was really also thinking this. Like, I want some Burger King breakfast. But, um, yeah, so who's the piece of shit in the story, Bobby? So I, I think we haven't been told the full story i think the workers version of events sounds very much like what i would do after having a rough interaction with a customer i don't think he said no sir you are incorrect i apologize for having well to he, didn't, you, I, I didn't quote, he didn't say that he just said hey man what's wrong you know it's like no 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 but i that's i don't think that's how it went down i think it okay. was you dumb motherfucker we're running a promotion Stop running, you goddamn... You know what I mean? Like, I think there was an right. interaction at the drive through and the gentleman who, let's be honest, if you go to Burger King, they're going to screw up your order pretty often, right? You know the price. It's your daily order. You're going, something's off here, and the guy's like, nah, you're dumb, and you're like, I'm not dumb. You, you work at Bur- Burger King. If you want to have that type of attitude at the drive through and Burger King, when a gentleman parks his car and pulls a gun on you, the only proper response is to also pull a gun on the gentleman who stopped his car. Like, if you're going to bring that level of energy to the table, you bring a gun to a gunfight. Do you ever watch that <laughs> lizard dude who gives advice? No. He's like a gecko. He paints his face green and people call in and he gives them life advice. So a dude called in and he was like, I work at Taco Bell and we have a beef with the local McDonald's. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I guess a while back their manager punched our manager or some shit. But now when we see them, it's on site. Me and the Taco Bell boys, we call ourselves MDK, McDonald's killers. Like, it's in the streets. They're brawling. That's the level of energy you need to bring to the table. Yeah. By the way, I'm looking at Grubhub, right? Or, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I could tell you're ordering Grubhub's. food and not listening to my great stories. No, I'm not ordering food. enough with Terry's to- fucking to- comments. But <laughs> when it's- <laughs> now you're fucking oh, stomach. No. It's a little, no, what it's I'm a, saying is we're about I to have our grapes quick, argument. I wanted to know how big of a deal this really was. Like the cheapest breakfast sandwich they've got is like besides like with the no meats. You're just going like the egg and cheese biscuit. That's like three eighty nine. But you, this guy said sausage in his shit. Anything with sausage in it or anything like that, the cheapest you could get is five thirty nine. Dude, they got burritos that are like six bucks. I didn't know they had burritos now there. But this guy to get oh, hash browns are two eighty nine. Even if he got it with the meal, let's just say he got the meal, and if he gets the burger, he gets the the biscuit meal, whatever. That's like nine ten dollars. The fact that he was gonna get eight dollars, he got more food for less than one meal. Dude, put the gun in your own mouth. I'm sorry, but like you're I, now I'm mad because now I look at this. That no, was no, fucking it's, greatest deal of all times. You're misunderstanding. Here's what happened. This guy was having a bad day. He went to Burger King because that's his pick-me-up, right? And he knew what it was supposed to cost, and he got through the line. I'm sure it took longer than it needed to because it's a Burger King in Northeast Ohio. So trust me, they're not there to get things done efficiently, right? Yeah, so then he's looking, and he's going, something's up, something's off. And the guy's like, fuck you, nothing's off. I know how to do my job. Like, it was 100% he was exacerbated. The other day I went to Taco Bell. That's my depression place, right? I'm in the yeah. line, order a sugar free Baja meal? Blast. Uh, this was just I was something quick, so it was a cool. sugar free Baja Blast. I was gonna grab two uh, cheesy beef burritos, like while I drove nice. somewhere that's else a, to eat quickly. That's a good one, yeah. Took 20 minutes to get through the line. I got to the window. The guy just handed me my Baja Blast and was like, "Just go." 
And I was like, what about the burritos? And he's like, just go. And I was like, all right, all right. He didn't charge me or anything, but it's like, right, if I had been having a worse day, I, I could see myself not pulling a gun but parking the car and going inside and being like can i get my fucking burrito you know what i mean like so i think that's what happened it got escalated by the employee's shitty attitude and it's ohio have a gun the piece of shit in this i just realized by looking over here is burger king a i didn't know they have a triple whopper now which that's too much oh yeah i i at Wendy's, I'll do the triple, the Dave's triple or something like that. That because that better meat. Like I'm sorry, it's just a better burger. The triple Whopper meal is not with cheese. You have to always if Whoppers, you got to add fucking cheese. So we'll just so that already pissed off. No one wants just three stacks of beef. You need cheese in between the beef just to fucking get through your throat. You fucking need cheese in the beef. So to do that, you know I'm upgrading. I'm not going straight beef. No the triple Whopper by itself. Is ten dollars and forty nine cents, and you know nobody just wants that. The meal is almost seventeen fucking dollars, and all you're adding is fries and a shit drink. The fries cost you nothing. The drink cost you nothing, dude. This guy got charged eight dollars for fucking five things when you can get this shitty meal. You can get you get two of those things. He could have been sixteen dollars and gotten double the fucking breakfast goo he got. For this fucking triple Whopper. And by the way, I'm not I'm not just reading the regular Burger King menu. I'm reading their menu part called Burgers for Breakfast. They literally have a section called Burgers for Breakfast on oh, Burger God. King. I'm going to run yeah. to the bathroom and puke on that one. Yeah, I'm going to shit myself on that one. And while you go shit yourself, and the piece of shit, by the way, is us for not getting that guy. I think we could get the retarded kid from the basketball team, if he was real, and we could get the uh, guy from Burger King with the gun on the show. We should have had him on for a Friday Super Guest thing. By the way, if you guys right now want to subscribe and like it, we really appreciate you. That'd be awesome if you did that. Um, real quick, I want to say thank you to everybody who's joined the Patreon recently. If we can get more people, that'd be awesome if you guys could for as little as $3 a month. Um, we do a POS show on Tuesday nights live on here. But the second that show's done, that one doesn't stay on YouTube like the other ones do to watch a replay. That goes and lives on POS. On uh, Patreon, I mean... So if you subscribe, you get that to the show. Your money helps support the show and the streaming and all those things like that. So just subscribe, like and like the video here as well. We all appreciate you guys doing all that shit. Bobby is back from pooping. Puking. I know, but I thought and, pooping uh, was nice when the puking in the morning. Nah, that's the best way to wake up in the morning. It keeps you skinny. But uh, also share that article. <laughs> what? Share the article, fans of the show. Share the retarded boy playing basketball article. I'll tweet oh, it out. I thought you really wanted me to share the article about Burger King guns. Like, go find it yourself. <laughs> no, no, no. I want you guys to by share way, that. Spread the misinformation. By the way, V, if you think Burger King's putting down calories, no one will walk in if they put down what the calories are in that. Oh, I didn't know they made a sugar-free Baja Blast. I thought Baja Blast was just sugar. That was the whole point of it. No, that's how you say it. Uh, they have a sugar-free version, too. I like it because they say the fake sugar gives you cancer. A lot of things can give you cancer if you try hard enough. It's like that old uh, joke where it's like they say the spartamine, the pink ones give you brain cancer, and the other ones cause, uh, the yellow causes all, Alzheimer's, so I make some both, so I get brain cancer and forget about it or something. I forget whose joke. Was. <laughs> they probably did it better. Forget about it. It's the Ron Popeil said it, forget it. <laughs> brain cancer and forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and to answer your question, it's 1120 calories in a triple Whopper. Just the Whopper, not the fries and the drink. We're just talking no, just the triple just Whopper. That and that's without cheese. Yeah. Yeah. You're, 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 you should not eat that. Yeah. That's your day. That's like your day. If you're not, you know what I mean? Like that's the, if you're, I know people want to go, I watch my calorie. Most Americans I think are doing 15, 1500 to 2000 calories a day. At least, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you go average. You know, you average in your big fat pieces of shit, and you're fucking. I throw stuff up sometimes, and you put them together. I would say it's probably around two thousand calories. So two thousands a basic diet, yeah. Right, a basic diet, not even being gross. Dropping eleven hundred of those calories right away out of one sandwich, and you know if you're eating that sandwich, you're you're having fries, you're having a drink, you're probably getting pie. <laughs> that yeah, Burger King, Burger King does the Hershey pie. I would imagine you're getting a milkshake as well. It's breakfast. You want some kind of shake to wake you up in the morning. 
Jim's helping you with the monk fruit. That, uh, yeah, I could try stevia. I'm the same way, V. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna look at it and go, am I have dry meat or am I gonna have a fucking like a terrible like Domino's or Pizza Hut pizza? So that's just gonna be gross, but all the, like a medium pan with the buttery crust and the fucking. If I'm gonna feel gross later, I'd rather go bang for my buck. That's why I would be pumped if I would. You could tell me all the calories in the meal that guy had with the gun, but I would mm-hmm. go. I don't care. It was eight fucking dollars. Exactly. To me, exactly. it's worth it. If I'm gonna kill myself and I only spend less, I spend less than ten dollars, then that's worth the kill. And the best way to get around all that is to go to Nathan's and eat a bunch of their shit and then puke it up. You don't feel like shit yeah. in the morning. Yeah, or you just do that and then you become a hot dog eating champion. You could be a champion and throw up. What do you got, Bobby? No, I was just thinking maybe. No, maybe I meant story wise, Michael Thompson might be might be. Continuing his athletic career in a different... He's not our friend because you made him up. (laughs) No, I'm pretty sure there's a guy named that. (laughs) No, there's definitely a guy named that. And and there's a guy guy who's retarded named that too, probably. But um, go ahead. What story you got next? Let me pull up my story right here real quick. Uh, So MIT Sloan School of Management did a study that shed light on the disparities in voters' knowledge of political news. Uh, the study found out that... God damn it, hang on. A study co-authored by an MIT Sloan assistant economics professor found that older, wealthier white males are more likely to be aware of news stories, which could influence political or politicians to skew politics and policies in their favor. The study also revealed that voters are less likely to know stories unfavorable about their own political party, and minorities may be less informed about political news. Who's the piece of shit in this story? (laughs) Is it MIT Sloan for stating the obvious? Like, at this point, we know that white men in particular pay attention to the news more than anybody else that people are living in an echo chamber, right? Look at Twitter, look at Instagram. What you like is what it shows you. Look at YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, that's not new news. Is it women for claiming to know all this shit but not doing the due diligence? Is it minorities for just getting lumped in and shit on for no reason at the end of the study? They just kind of got dunked in at the end there. Yeah, like, no reason. What? Just keep it between the sexes. Let's. So basically, uh, what? Pat, tell me why women are piece of shit in this story. Well, a the minority thing is great because I I, I know from comedy and stuff. I uh, I know a couple kids who happen to be younger black males, like early twenties. I mean, late twenties, early thirties. I don't think by by knowing them and by doing comedy shows and meeting people and stuff. I think right now, like you said, old white men my age and older are paying attention to the news because that's what they've always done. Their dad did it. They're still in that thing where you watch the, even if you don't want to watch it, you watch the news to be informed so you can say dumb shit in a half ass sentence. When someone yells out something like the gas prices are high, they go, here's why they're high. They want to be able to yell that. You know what I mean? Like they want, that's not all that, they want. It's like that, that bullet and point they, thing. they need to know the weather so they can call their son every day and tell him about the weather coming tomorrow, three States away and assuming it's going to be the exact same. Right. Right, or or also message you and go, uh, uh, are you safe? And you're like, well, yeah, why wouldn't I be safe? Well, I saw what that. What does that mean? It's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not there, Dad. I'm, wherever that is, I'm not there. Yeah, I saw it in Hoboken. Like, I'm not near Hoboken. You know, but yeah, the uh, the second most educated when it comes to the news are young black males. Young black males have been paying attention to the news because of all the things that have been happening to them in the news and become very educated on the news. So this study isn't even right when it comes to that. Most people that are paying those, are they as vocal about it on Facebook and shit? Not really, because what they also do is they're very good at forming it into their own opinion so that it doesn't come off 
like they just read the newspaper. A older white guy just goes, I read this in the Times. Like he gives the, he citations it right away. He's like, if you look down at the asterisk, you'll learn now where I got this information. I got this joke from Playboy magazine. Like they'll always tell you where they got their shit. But a young black male is very educated in that way. The fact that MIT is saying minorities don't know stuff. When, by the way, when you think MIT, do you think white guy? No, I think Asian people all day, every day. But the Massachusetts da, 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 Institute of Technology, da, da, da. that's what I think. Yeah, wow. I think of that all day. Their theme song is... Bow, 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 bow. That's what their MIT theme song is. I just did, yeah. football team. I know, I was just trying to do it louder. Because it was and quiet, I, was like, I didn't really hear it. You didn't, do, you, didn't do a hard, you didn't do a hard dong, Bobby. You're welcome, hard dong. Maybe that's the name of the podcast. But, but the... It's not women... It's MIT, Sloan. This is not, out of all the things you can report about and talk about, what is this supposed to do? A report like this, you're supposed to read this thing and get out. Are you outraged? Do you care? Is someone upset? I mean, you're maybe you think you're doing social divide. And you think that gets it. It's kind of like, you know when you know a comic who's like, I'm going to write this crazy controversial thing and this will get me viral. And then you like read it and it's like, you know, people who don't like Real Housewives are really gay. And like, I don't care about this at all. I know you think you just made fun of people, but this four people care. This article is like, I'm happy you brought it up. It's fun for conversation. But then for them to write it for real is the biggest waste of time. It's almost like they shouldn't be in MIT, a smart guy school, and they're doing dumb guy shit. So MIT is the piece of shit. I, I also think MIT is the piece of shit for using this to justify why they don't teach political science. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, that we don't have any of those here. Well, it's also um, a math school. Yeah, exactly. Maybe MIT Sloan's not. Maybe the real MIT Oh, is. you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just thinking MIT. Is MIT Sloan different? I don't know. Who's Sloan? <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> but uh, for me, the piece of shit in this story... Would uh, this is gonna surprise you here, Pat? It would have to be people who bitch all the time and not about not getting equal representation in politics, and then don't do the legwork to have the conversation about politics. It's not women. I'm not just shitting on women here. It's literally like, remember Flash we used to have on? Yeah, from the uh, retail days. Yeah, Flash is the guy that this article is describing. He's on getting kicked off of Facebook every day for sharing articles about Trump still being the president and all that. Yeah, we stuff. all know that guy that gets kicked off. You're like, what are you doing with your life? Why are you getting kicked off Facebook? You're 90. But he also doesn't understand politics. Like, if you were like, hey, how do we choose the president? He couldn't explain the Electoral College or like anything along those lines. He'd be like, the president makes the laws. And you're like, that's not quite how it works. You know what I mean? Like, Guys, I don't, don't go to understand. any college, electoral or, or otherwise. The basics. And it's like, if you want, I don't know. I mean, it's fun to just talk shit about stuff you don't know, like MIT Sloan. But uh, at the same time, like, if you really want to do that stuff, be educated. One of my favorite posts is, even though they've kind of become gay now, uh, the Zach Della Roach, where it's like, oh, look, at this artist turned political scientist now and he's like it doesn't take it you know political science degree from harvard to tell you this is fucked up but if it helps i have you know what i mean like he was educated right. on the subject so like it brings a case of val validity to the table kind of like you were saying with the comics you know forming your own opinion based on a bunch of different sources right you do the research a guy we have on a bunch brandon from brandon bonanza go check out his uh youtube channel by the way brandon was somebody who at one point was raised uh catholic um, started to question religion instead of just going fuck all religion it's dumb I don't care literally went down a road of studied every religion read read books read everything he could did any research he could to learn all of them and he became a spiritual person I mean, that, that's not something I would do but at least when he brings up an opinion about religion I know there's a lot of facts there there's a lot of research he put in it becomes with his own opinion skewed but at the same time at least he put in the research to find everything out before he opens his mouth and he only opens his mouth when someone brings it up, not him. Same thing with the guys I'm talking about. They're not out there saying it first. White people are the ones, the white men, even though we're the ones reading the news, we're the first one to go at a party and go. Someone's like, oh, how's the sandwiches? He goes, well, it's not, the sandwiches are better than what's happening in Palestine. And then you know they don't know yeah. anything about that. 
And they just exactly. they read a quick article and they're trying to say shit because they, they don't have their own information. So even what they're talking about in that study, it's not like it's going for good. I appreciate someone who might... There might be a lot of people reading the paper and seeing the news, but they're not talking about it. So therefore, these people think, well, they must not be reading it. What... When I was a kid, it's not like my my dad or grandpa went and told people they read the paper. Everyone just expected you read the paper. And if you didn't, you didn't. They'd say, oh, did you see this article in the fucking paper? And they go, no. Go, All right. And then they'd either tell them, well, you should go check it out. Or they'd go, move on. Did you see the sports game last night? Like, they didn't go into it. Let's go back to being stupid. Yeah, I like the idea of not discussing religion, politics, or... What was the third one? Oh, um, your mom. No, no, I don't think that. Never was discuss it. religion, politics, or your mom at the dinner table. No, I think it's just politics and religion. Maybe it was sex. Well, I don't think anyone was doing sex at the table. It used to be, you know, no, that's don't all we fucking about. talk about now. What's what, well, yeah, what does that right, dude yeah. have? What does that dude fuck? What, what when when you said sex, guy, I was thinking yeah. about like actual intercourse, not like what sex you are, or like having like what type of sex you like to have. Like that's all people talk about these days. I don't know if you've seen that video out there. I forget what college they were at, but this guy went to this one college or a high school. I'm sorry, it was a high school area. You know, all these high school kids who were, pro- it was like a prep high school. So all promising kids, all going to colleges, all stuff like that, of all different races and sexes and everything. And the guy goes, I just have a question. You guys are all graduating. I just got a quick question for you to each person. How many genders are there? And these are all kids that are like seven, 17 to 18 or 16 to 18. All of them were afraid. And I'm joking. All of them were afraid to answer. They're like, no comment. And they're like, wait, what? The guy goes, and one kid just goes, I want to go to college, man. I just want to go to college. Like, they're afraid to say it out loud because they feel like their college is going to get upset because they've been now brainwashed and it's now okay to say just two or whatever. Yeah. They're, like, they're like, one lady goes, I'll Google it, whatever they say. Are you okay with that? Like, just <laughs> whatever. But all these kids, and it was like they were afraid to do it. That's what we're focused on. Let's go back to the old guy reading the paper. And now I want to yeah. get the whole, listen, you can identify as you want. I'm not saying you can identify as you want, but this crazy, like, mindset we have like you better have this directive it's fucking nuts yeah just mind your own business it's not that hard yeah mind your business like we mind have pride month i say it every pride month we should have a shame month where you pretend like you're ashamed what you do in the bedroom which is a shameful act that's why god made women in fear because of what they have to do here we go stop talking well, no, about that's it. not what we were doing with this stop talking about it that's my whole thing am i right ladies <laughs> All right. Men be um, fucking oh. like this. Men be, be fucking, fucking like this. All right. Since you brought up ladies, let's do a ladies oh boy. story. Oh nope, boy. It's good, positive ladies. Or we've been kind of covering this a bunch anyway. Um, Caitlin Clark uh, of Iowa. They're going to be in the final four. Caitlin Clark uh, will go down in history as one of the greatest female, not only college basketball players. At this point, what she's done, even if she doesn't do anything after this, will go down as one of the greatest female athletes when it comes to dominance in her sport. We'll definitely do that. She has dominated college, women's college basketball in a time where there are – it's not like it's just her and everyone stinks. No. Paige Bruckner, there's uh, Angel Reese. There are some great players right now. It might be the best – there's been more heralded people that came out of Tennessee and UConn, things like that back in the day, big names that got bigger. But when you look at just like talent wise, it might be one of the strongest women's fields ever. And it's proving it not just in people talking about it a, a, a little more than it ever, attendance wise to college basketball games. Viewing, on, which is huge. Attendance is one thing. You can say you're all going out and doing it. People literally turning on women's college basketball. The first, second round of the NCAA tournament, that was never happening. The people are watch people are watching the Big Ten Chip. I know it's her and she was breaking records, Caitlin Clark, but they're watching it. They're watching other games too. There are people who learned about her last year that started following her career. And what's been happening is that it's starting to get um comparisons to in the late 70s when Magic Johnson and Larry Larry Bird came into the NBA, the NBA was not viewed every day. If you before Larry John Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, 
the if you wanted to watch the NBA, you were watching a replay. It wasn't live. It was just no. on sometime on some random ass channel. They made it so it was like must see TV. And then by them doing that, that allowed Michael Jordan to be able to come into a stage and be this thing. And now everyone can see what they want. But those two were the ones that made people give a fuck coming out of college into the NBA. And they and the NBA was very smart as before the draft by going, oh, I guess we'll make sure the Lakers get this pick and the Celtics get this pick because we yeah. need an East Coast and a West Coast. We we need on both sides to have that right. They can't both be in the Western Conference, Eastern Conference, whatever. Regardless of that, the comparisons are there. And the WNBA's uh, commissioner, I don't remember her fucking name. Um, where the fuck is it? She came out. Um, where the fuck? Oh, Kathy Engelberg. Face. Oh yeah, Kathy, Kathy Engelbert. Engelbert. If you were gonna say Dyke McDyke face, but give it a real name, it's Kathy Engelbert. That definitely sounds like a woman that said no to you when you were like, "Do you want to go to the prom?" No one's going to the prom. Like, I don't go anywhere with men. Like, all right, Kathy Engelbert. You know what I mean? Like, keep like, shooting your go. jumper, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep mowing the lawn if you know what I mean, <laughs> Kathy Engelbert, with your stupid mouth. But anyway, Kathy Engelbert came out and said, "This is incredible. This is great. This is just like Larry Bird and Magic Johnson." And then they ask other women reporters and uh, people involved in the WNBA, and they said, oh, this is great, this is awesome, this is just like Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Well, the problem is, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, this became that when they went to the NBA. The NBA wasn't saying while they were playing, this is great, this is going to save us. They weren't yeah. predicting some dumb shit or making it so everyone can just watch you fail if it doesn't work. They, they It happened. And then they celebrated it, and we talk about it now. And women's sports keep doing this. I know you want equality. Listen, I'm for you. More sports on TV, the better. I enjoy it. I like watching women's college basketball. Yeah, I live in Connecticut, so we've been having really good women's college basketball. It's normal around here. I know in other states it's not. We're not like, oh, my God, it just has to be the men. It's great basketball, and, and, the, and the crowds are awesome, and you you feel pumped up. It's like when you go watch a concert, but you never heard of the people, and your friend's like, hey, let's go watch this country. For, and you go, and everyone is fucking singing every song. You're almost like, have I been missing out on life? Why don't I know these songs? Why don't I know who this person is? And then you go into it, and you go, oh, I like this. This is cool, and I now am a fan. It's how you build fans you from the wave of it. But just by saying you should watch it because look what's happening, it's feeling too forced. Remember when they – and this is, I'm not even talking about women's sports. Soccer does this all the time. Every time there's a World Cup, every four years, they start to tell us, I don't know why you're not supporting Major League Soccer. I don't know. Look what happened here. This guy plays for Major League Soccer, and now he's going to – he's also in the World Cup. You love him right now. It's like, do I love him right now, or are you telling me I love him right now? Because ESPN yeah. kept telling me I loved – soccer and i'm like if it's on and nothing else is on i'll watch it but i don't really watch soccer but why don't women's why is it women's soccer on tv more no soccer is on tv more in america we're not watching it it streams on shit when they have nothing else to play peacock does it during the day sometimes i've caught myself at 10 a.m watching that but i've also caught myself at 10 a.m watching a rugby match because it's just something dumb on at 10 a.m and i'm like oh i don't know anything about this and i watch it to watch the audiences go nuts i don't even watch it for the game i just like hearing them all get fucking they get fired up better than we do you know what i mean i'll watch a cricket match if it comes on just to go what the fuck is this but it doesn't mean i'm gonna be out. i don't think that if there was a great cricket player they wouldn't say oh this is like the magic johnson and larry bird of the ship they're putting too much pressure on this thing an amazing thing is happening right now. Just let it happen. Let Caitlin Clark be Caitlin Clark. She might not even be the player that you're saying she's going to be in the WNBA. It might change. But there's other ones. Angel Reese is amazing. Paige Bruckner is amazing. She would have been Caitlin Clark if she didn't get injured for a year. Like These are superstars. Like, when you get to watch the Final Four women this year, there are some tremendous players as good or even better star-wise than in the men's Final Four. There's great teams in the men's Final Four, but star players, you're, there's no bigger star than Caitlin Clark. Nobody's that big of a star in the in the men's, and you're not waiting for them to come up there individually-wise, but the teams are there. Let this shit happen. And But people are just keep saying this thing, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Stop. But to say that, you're, you're kind of displaying what Magic Johnson and Larry Bird did. Because guess what Magic Johnson and Larry Bird also didn't have? A giant, a bigger company above it that was just like it supporting you we all oh, know i also what thought WNBA you were going to say condom sex 
Oh, Kano, you had no... Well, Larry Bird might have had Gotham set. I feel like Larry Bird straps on like four or five. You don't hear about too many Larry Bird kids running around. And if the ones they are, he claims them. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, that's like, true. Yeah. Larry Bird having AIDS would have been a way better. Like, you know how they say there's like um, different like uni- like versions of universes? Like, there's, like there's, in some that's, dimension, that, that's there's a, a good different universe. one. Yeah. yeah, the dimension where Larry Bird has AIDS is a fucking fun. <laughs> Larry Bird just fucking raw puss and then dudes or whatever. He's being Larry Bird. <laughs> raw dog and everything. I'll be right back. All right. But yeah, but it's 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 crazy that's happening. Like to me, the piece of shit in this story is the WNBA and the the uh, don't you call it the uh the commissioner and everybody who says out loud, This is our moment. This is you better be paying attention. If you're not watching this, then you're because what's going to happen is if people don't jump on this, if the WNBA draft doesn't have the coverage that they think it's supposed to have, if it doesn't have viewers, already in the WNBA, even when someone does well, already the complaints about Caitlin Clark by some circles in the WNBA are, well, why is the white girl getting the, and it's become a race thing. It's like, just be happy that you're being covered. Don't be mad at like who's getting covered. It's just the jealousy there. It's the WNBA for just not understanding what it's supposed to be. Just play your sport. Stop whining about everything. It's the person at work that you know that does a decent job, but not great. But they're always bragging when they do something well. And they're like, look what we did. I'm the best. I should should be the man. It's that waitress at a restaurant who tells everyone she should be the manager. You're doing all right, but just become the manager. Just work hard. Shut the fuck up. Then when you don't get made manager, you wonder why the other, why they get it. They're not as good as me. Well, they are. You just didn't notice it because you're not a manager. You're so self-centered. You can't notice it. WNBA has become that. They're going to say, we're great right now. We're great right now. Look at us. But you're not great right now. This has nothing to do with you. Caitlin Clark isn't playing for you. She's been offered other things. Caitlin Clark can get offered a ton of money by ESPN to just never play basketball again and be an analyst. You'd probably make more money there and have more job security for the next 20 years, sitting next to Lobo at halftime shows, breaking down basketball, and make and make $500,000 a year and be set for life. Instead of having to go to the WNBA and make half of that if she's the highest paid player on the team in the hope that her team can afford any other players or anyone's going to go. Because, yes, people will go for the first game. But after that, like you got to do the same thing. If you're the WNBA, you've got to take Caitlin Clark. Put her, her and Angel Reese already have this rivalry. It's been racial, been arguing. And I know they say their friendship on the outside now, and they've made up. But if you do the Larry Bird magic job, you got to really do the Larry Bird magic. You've got to build this up. You got to make me really care. But for you to say this is the Larry Bird Magic Johnson moment, they didn't say that the first day. Those two were dominant. They were amazing. They were battling for Rookie of the Year and MVP of the Year in their fucking first year. And then we were saying all these things. Fucking chill a little bit. You're putting too much pressure on a thing that can't live up to what the fuck you're saying. So me, the piece of shit, is WNBA. Bobby, who is it? Uh, It's not you for mansplaining how a business should work to the WNBA, like some people might accuse you (laughs) in the comments. (laughs) Oh god, we suck as people. Oh fuck. It, it's not uh it's it's not Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese. It's honestly it's kind of uh, us, you and I for expecting women to not act like women. Oh look, another girl's getting a whole bunch of attention. Let me see if I could take away some away and put it on me. Who could have seen that coming? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course, women are going to be women. That's that's what they do. And here's the thing, Caitlin Clark's great. Fun shooter, love the competitive spirit. Same with Angel Reese. She probably sprained her ankle pretty badly, played that whole game like a warrior. She's tough, man. She's really good. Neither of them score 10 points on a D3 school in a game. Like Men? It's not. Yeah. Like All right, yeah. I thought you local meant local LVC like, what D3 schools that good in women's. <laughs> no, no, no. But like that's my point. Like it's a different level of quality. We, my brother and I, my sister got really into the women's soccer thing. They need equal pay. And even though they were getting more than the men were with benefits and everything, um, my brother and I made the point, like then make a more entertaining sport. You know why nobody watches your boring shit in the world cup women? Cause you're annoying cunts. Just go Jeez, out there and okay. play the game. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're out there. Like we deserve equal pay. It's like every four years you do something in your biggest competitions, Japan. What are we doing here? You know what I mean? Like you're dominant in a sport where uh, at least a third of the world's women aren't allowed outside, like let alone to play the sport. And typically it's the countries that are usually the best at soccer. 
where the women aren't given the equal rights. There's there's a strong correlation between the two. So for me, it's like if you want to do that, great. But then yeah, make it hype it up. Have Caitlin Clark coming out and saying the N-word. Do it pro wrestling. You know what I mean? Like make her a heel or vice versa. You know what I mean? Like make Angel Reese a Black Panther. Just you, do it like entertainment. Set it up, but you got to do it right to make it more entertaining than what the men got going. Because to be honest with you, I've watched Caitlin Clark's games. I watched the other game after it. I watched the two games before, you know. But none of those were as entertaining as the men's games. Like, I'd much rather watch that. It's better basketball, especially at the college level. The NBA say what you want about traveling and changing the game. But, like, at the college level, the men's game is just as as, athletic, like, as fundamentally based. And they can still do the cool stuff like dunking. Right. I agree with you on that. That's why I think they have to stop comparing themselves to something they're not. And I'm not even saying men versus women. It's just don't compare yourself to what you are. You know, what, what something else is. That's not who you are. Build your own identity. The NBA was not comparing itself to the NFL or Major League Baseball. Especially the NFL wasn't. In the 70s, the NFL wasn't what it is now, too. It's now the America's past. Major League Baseball was still America's pastime in, in then. And in Major League Baseball, what, what helped them more than anything? Identity. When you rooted yeah. for a team, you rooted for a guy. When I grew up, Don, I liked the Yankees. So I, my, everyone, even if I didn't want them to be, Don Mattingly was my guy. Don Mattingly was my favorite. Why? Because he was the captain of the Yankees, and he was the yeah. best. And Willie Randolph was the best. And Ricky Henderson was the best. And even when he, back then when they were like, oh, he's buying players. Yeah, but we're buying guys for us. We're not winning anything with them. Dave Winfield, all those guys. were Reggie Jackson was hated. I didn't hate him. He was the best. These are the guys that I loved. You know, Even we got shitheads like when Yogi Berra coached the team and made Dale play third. And his son Dale stunk. Like, put in Tag Larulo. What are you fucking doing? But I still argue with that because this was my team and then other people would go how can you think don mattingly's the best he's not the best you know and, and then they would give george brett's the best because i'm a royals fan so he has the cal ripkins the best because i'm an orioles fan that's the fucking people you cared about mike greenwell like how is mike greenwell the best he plays the fucking giant wall good a retard can play a giant wall fuck off anyway so it was like that's the way they always were with that shit it was like identity when yeah. what they're not what they're, what they're not focusing on is it wasn't that Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were just great. It wasn't that Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were just going to become Hall of Fame players. It's that the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers got identities. You looked at the Lakers and Magic Johnson brought Showtime. Larry Bird brought grit, hustle, and that Boston, New England, fucking white blue collar, fuck you attitude to these places. They they became the identity. Magic Johnson was the perfect bobblehead for Los Angeles in yeah. Hollywood. Larry Bird was the perfect the bobblehead the flag for Boston in that area. Mm -hmm. When Patrick Ewing came to the Knicks, people were like, okay, boom, the Knicks are this larger than life man in a larger than life thing. This makes sense to have that. Jordan going to Chicago, people didn't give a shit about Chicago sports. Jordan became Chicago and all of a sudden Chicago is all about class and like being the best and up where the, where the, the people the cubs and the white Sox and everyone else was like the bears were like fuck now we have to be good we were good being level loop fuck you guys now we have to step it up and they all did in a way you know what i mean it's it, it's gotta be uh, it's not about the women not being as good as the men it's making me give a fuck about the women like, it's the entertainment do things yeah. that other sports do put them caitlin clark needs to be on a lot of shit i need to know she more about caitlin clark the thing they need to rip off isn't the Larry Bird Magic Johnson. She needs to take a page out of Kendrick Lamar's book. Like, if the yeah. WNBA really wants to make Caitlin Clark the thing in this Angel Reese rivalry, Caitlin should hold a press conference and be like, stop. Angel Reese isn't my rival. There's no rival. And then she needs to cut a promo and be like, I'm better than Sabrina. I'm better than Ter Like, go through all the stars in the NBA right now and call them all out and be like, or the WNBA, I mean, and be like, I'm coming in to teach you what's up like i'm going to reach like go out there and be that guy because then people will watch every game if they make it just angel versus caitlin the three times a year they play they might get a, a slight spike in viewership but if they just make caitlin the heel the shit talk the conor mcgregor of the wnba then people might tune in if every night people are going like matt rempe in hockey the ranger guy who fights every night people tune in just to see him fight 
because they want it. You know what I mean? Like make her the thing that everybody kind of roots against. The Tiger Woods is a perfect example. And Larry right. Bird was Except that to a say, large extent I... too. Yeah. Like Larry Bird was a large that, but then Magic was doing his own thing. And that's where the rivalry came in because they were both their own. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, it but used... everyone was waiting for them to touch. You know what I mean? They wanted them to be together, to go against each other. And because back then they didn't play as much with each other, it was like twice a year, you couldn't wait. Oh, I hope they make the final so I can see them go against each other. Because they did this in college. I want to see this thing. Um, to use like a wrestling thing, uh, when the ECW was around, there was a small little promotion that became big because they were doing things different to everybody. And then if the money wasn't there, they were a small thing that, like a WNBA, tried real hard to get themselves focused. And for a while, they got themselves big and fo focused on stuff because people were paying attention to things. And one of the biggest things, it's storyline they had for a long time. There was a, a guy named uh, Taz, and he was this tiny little tough guy. He was like their Stone Cold Steve Austin type tough guy guy. And then there was Rob Van Dam. And the two of them hated each other. But Paul Heyman didn't let them touch each other or even be in the same ring for a year. They would talk. Whenever they were cutting a promo about other stuff, they would also go, fuck this guy like you're saying. Fuck this guy. Even though I'm supposed to fight this guy. Fuck you, Taz. I'm going to fuck you up. So a year later, when they finally got in the same, you were so anticipated, it was their highest numbers for pay-per-view. Now they shot their load after that, and it was hard to build that up again. But for a year, they made you care about this fucking thing. I think Caitlyn needs to become whatever. She's a New York Liberty. Then Caitlyn Clark needs to be New York Liberty. The New York Liberty now needs to be like they do, well, what's it called? Hard knocks on HBO, like with, the, with, the, with football. You have to get me behind how they, from Caitlyn being drafted, I need to see this somewhere where I can see it all the time, where I'm, I'm learning about Caitlyn and her teammates and all that stuff. And then while they're talking, they're like, it's like, you know, look at the schedule this year. And they look and they go, there's the LA Sparks. It's like, I know the other games don't matter. But I'm so tired of so and so, not Angel Reese or whatever. So and so, this person got mad when they were comparing me to the NBA players, saying me and Draymond Green be better matchup than me and any of you women there. And then they go to yeah. the LA Sparks, they're hard knocks, and she's like, "This girl thinks she can play with the men? She can't even play with us." Are you kidding? When they come to LA, they're gonna go home cry. She'll be going back to Iowa in two minutes. She'll be praying yeah. that she's playing against NC State. That's the building you need. You don't need to yep. compare it to other shit. Make your own new shit. That uh, we're saying the exact same thing. Like, right. I, so I'm saying, I'm I want that. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Like, have Caitlin go out there, put that in the press, get people fired up, or you know, and then let Angel Reese do the same. Like, let these people talk their shit, get it out there. I'm the best. Don't you ever forget it. I, I don't. The one thing you said that would be tough, and then we'll get off the Caitlin Clark thing. I'm sorry, we're doing a lot of the, that shit. But the she one also thing doesn't I think have that a would penis. be. That Ew. was a big debate um, in the chat that we know of. I know. I, I, no, it's not a guy. Like, she's just, females can be very talented athletes. Um, she, I don't think that she needs to come out and just be like the heel because if no one's really watching it, if it doesn't work in that way, now you're the one person that was your darling that people want to, the girls want to buy your merch. Now you're kind of like, oh, you like the bitch that hates all women? Like, that's the problem. I'm not saying she has to be John Cena in the super face, but she kind of has to be both sides. It has to be about, hey, you're all worried about me. Why don't we worry about making women's basketball better? I'm here to make your job better. I'm here. Like, in re I hate to keep doing wrestling analogies, but, like, the big story they're doing about the payoff in WrestleMania next, this weekend uh, for three years, they've done this story where Roman Reigns, the wrestler, says he's the head of the table. He's the Samoan family. Dealer. He's the reason all the play. This is what he says in his, all his promos. You all hate me, but I'm the reason you all have million dollar contracts. I'm the reason you get seen on TV. I'm I feed your families. You fucking need me. I'm here. I'm better than all of you, but you need me. So you should respect me and he yells acknowledge me when you walk. Caitlin Clark needs to walk out and go, hey, thank you for drafting me acknowledge me put the finger up and everyone else has to do it with her i'm not saying that you're not good but you need me so people know you're good you want everyone in this league wants you cheryl swoops all these other people uh, she's probably been retired for years whatever i'll know the women in there now if you want to know if you want to get known to be happy i'm here i now made you the, the undertaker said in wrestling every time he beats somebody he goes you're welcome, kid. I just made you famous. You know what I mean? I, 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 because you wrestled me, now people know who the fuck you are. She can't go in and say, you all suck. I'm all better than you. What she needs to say is, I'm here to save you. 
That's the shit I, you need. Because you can I, either I, get I, on board with it or get against it. But either way, it's like the Duke thing with Christian Leitner and Bobby Early and all that. You either, if you love Duke, you thought they were the best. If you didn't love Duke, you were like, I can't wait to beat Duke. I can't wait to punch Bobby Early in his dumb face. But you still respected the game they played. My, my only counter to that would be, much like wrestling, who watches sports? Men was the answer. No, a, a, a lot of women do now. Base, okay. Especially like baseball and shit like that. A lot, a lot of... It's not is, even close to 40-60. It's still 30-70 at least. Um, you got to okay, think maybe, internationally. No, I, well, I'm not thinking international. I'm thinking just like we're, we're talking about WNBA, so I'm thinking like America right now. A lot of men bonding with their daughter, a lot of b- baseball fans, all, all, all that stuff... There's way more women yelling about baseball right now than men. Yeah, because men understand it. No, they're not. They understand. No, they're not watching it anymore. They're watching men UFC. The they're watching. They're, like, they're watching. Why do they punch throw fights. underhand? No one's saying that. Uh, my my three sisters are, are the most diehard Yankee fans there are. They go to like fucking season ticket games and shit. Women with the dads who love them are watching baseball. Okay, well, the majority of women, because the NBA is an international sport. Um, the point I'm making is how is it international would sell? Wait, WNBA doesn't the, have any international teams. The they NBA, might watch it there, but there's no. It's not international. It's just NBA American. is an international sport. No, Toronto. the NBA is loved international, but it's not an international sport. It's just it's Toronto businesses are only in America and in Canada. It's North America. That's it. Okay, they, that's it might be adored and loved that's all over the place. But it's not an international sport. That's two nations. Yeah, but you when you say international, people think you mean Japan and shit, not Canada sometimes. Yeah, nobody's watching the Turkish League. Even in Turkey, they're watching LeBron. Right, but it's not a, it's not an international sport. It's just love there. That's like saying soccer's yeah, international saying that has, you watch it from here. It has international viewers, is my point. Whereas like if the WNBA so wants that, nobody would sell <laughs> more jerseys than a sexist woman in the WNBA against yes, they, women. No, they would not. They'd be like, not I just sexist. crossed you. What's up, bitch? You on your period or something? Like I'm telling you, all that Clay Dude. Caitlin Clark jerseys in the Middle East, it'd be incredible. Maybe you're getting used to not getting laid, but there's no guy in the world who wants to get laid who wears a feminist lady shirt. No, no, she's a sexist. The opposite. She hates women. She's just in the league being like, I'm better yeah. than all of you. And you're because trying, women she hates women. I, 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 I'm, the only, I'm the she only I'm the only woman. Women, and you're trying to date a woman. Yeah, you can't wear that person's shirt. You can't wear their best. shirt. And then go on a date with, like, Caitlin Clark, I hate lady shirt. Caitlin, how did you score 70 points? Well, I was playing against a bunch of bitches, and we all know bitches suck at basketball. Uh, Bobby, I think we already <laughs> solved this. I, I just realized we solved this earlier with a different thing we brought up. We solved it. Caitlin have Clark Caitlin comes out with two bumpers. Man? No, she comes out with two bumper <laughs> stickers. One that says, I hate ladies. And, and one with a question mark that says, I hate ladies. And there it is. Ladies? You're selling the Boom. both sides. <laughs> oh gosh. Ugh. What do you you got you got more things? Honestly, I got one I, more. The only what thing I have do? to bitch about is my chat GPT. So why don't you do your yeah. story? But can you do let's do our plugs real quick so I can pee for a final time. You go ahead. I, I did I plugs while you were going to the bathroom, so go ahead. All right, I'm oh you want I me to do more be... plugs? Friday and Saturday, I'll be at in PA next week, and I am in Phoenix with Berg. Uh, make sure you check out our Patreon. We got lots of good shit there. Uh, Eastside Dave just put up, we did a character carousel from the Tales from the Satellite. We looked at a lot of the characters he did. It's literally premiering against us, so I need to call him and yell at him for that. But <laughs> in the future, maybe we could premiere at 10. I don't know. So we're not competing against myself. But check that out when you're done watching us here. All right, why don't you go bathroom quick? I'll handle this for a second. You come I'm back. so we'll sorry, buddy. Story. No, no worries. Your bladder is tall, small, but you're you're large in stature. Um, if you're not watching, first of all, on our POS show that's on the Patreon now, if you want to watch it, it was a hilarious episode. All our evening ones will be up there once they go live. I talked about a court case I've been watching that's from the Apple River stabbing. If you're not watching this trial. It's the greatest fucking story of all the all the video, uh, dude. You get to see a thousand body cams of a guy who thinks he's being attacked by younger kids and comes out stabbing and going nuts. It's not. Go look it up for yourself. Go check it out because I want to talk about it next week. But also, if you make sure you're tuned in this Tuesday, we'll put up the time. It's probably gonna be eight o'clock again. And then the, once we're done with this show, it's only gonna live on the Patreon. So if you want to get yourself ready, we found out last week. 
that there is a uh, Special Olympics Hall of Fame. And, and there's, a, there's a section on there where you can nominate someone for the Special Olympics Hall of Fame. We are gonna st- we are gonna nominate Stuttering John Melendez for the Special Olympics Hall of Fame, and we need your help. You're gonna come on with us, and you're gonna let us know what qualities we should put in, how we pitch this, how we send this in, and we're gonna do this. If people want to let him know, fine. I'm not doing it for his attention. I just think it's fucking funny. Everyone else is doing yelling at him thing why don't we try to lift him up like bobby said lift people up by giving them what they deserve if there's not if, if i can think of one person who's retarded and deserves to be the king of it it's that guy stuttering john so we're gonna do that on tuesday eight o'clock so tune in for us there but if you don't get to watch it tuesday eight and you want to find out what we talked about last week to get to that point join the patreon get on over there for as little as three bucks ten's nicer you support the show and you get to do fun shit like that bobby go ahead I, I didn't have anything. I thought you were gonna be like, yeah, then join the Patreon. Like, I don't know, just oh, jump in. Like, I, I already plugged the Patreon. Sorry, I was I was checking uh, a text to make sure no, it wasn't you, about me. Okay. But uh, I love the Are idea you nervous? of nominating. No, 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 I, I, I'm gonna lean to this. Are you nervous? Mm, usually. Oh, good. Then you're just like. Parents in New York City, because nervous parents beg NYC officials to do more to protect their kids. From what? From the solar eclipse. Yeah. New York City parents are real fucking worried because their kids are going to get out of school at 3 o'clock and the solar eclipse happens at 3 o'clock. And they're worried (laughs) that if no one's watching their kids, their dumb kids are going to stare at the sun and burn their fucking eyes out. and They can't be there. So they want the government to get involved and make sure that even though the school's out, that somehow someone's watching them or pushing their heads down or blind through the peekaboos, whatever the fuck they're doing to make sure these kids don't look at the thing. They are, they, it, they're not, what they're not doing is saying, hey, can we take the day off from school and make me watch our kids? Or maybe, hey, I'll take my kid out of school if I'm so worried my kid can't not stare at the fake sun for fucking three minutes. But wait, as they put, go ahead. So they, the kids are going to be at school. Well, so it's, they want, it's like, happening the around police. three o'clock. So they oh, that's when they get out. out. Okay, school. okay. All yeah. right. I was confused, like why they were like, "We need the." Anyway, never mind. My bad. No, but either way, even if they were, even if they're kind of at school, they're still worried that no one's gonna. The parents are already. The parents are already saying that the school is dropping the ball before the ball's even been put into play. Like yeah. it, it's insane. But by the I way, I mean, okay. Who, <laughs> in, go ahead. In their defense, it's public school teachers. Oh, absolutely, but it's. Also, parents who love to blame public school teachers. Public school teachers stopped giving a fuck when parents got involved more. Mm -hmm. Public school teachers Mm -hmm. cared when parents let them be public school teachers. When parents started saying, I know better than you, you can't do this to my kid, you can't do that. Back in the day when we were, I'm sure even when you were a kid, when I was a kid, if I came home and I argued my teacher, they're like, your teacher's right, you're wrong. They didn't even hear what was said. You listen to your teacher. Not that I'm saying that it has to be that way, but it's not, it didn't go halfway. It didn't like go, hey, let's have a reasonable conversation. It went, now the kid's always right, fuck the teacher, so they don't care anymore. People that do care, that had passion for it, are now going online and teaching things because it's easier to do a fucking YouTube tutorial about something than deal with parents, not the kids. And now the kids act the way they want because they're told they can act the way they want. Everyone's like, kids are acting wild in school. It's because they're being told by the parents they can, they're never wrong. So it's like that first kind of grade. shit. Anyway, they're not even wrong about staring at the fucking sun. But the New York Post nailed it with their first sentence of this. They'll be reading, writing, and retina burning. Yeah, retina burning. That's not even a thing. Um, basically, what they've been saying is what I just said. With the eclipse happening, and it's supposed to happen around 3 o'clock, they're worried. Um, a woman said the city should do more to protect our kids. If anything happens to my son, I'm going to blame them. This woman has already said this quote. She's not her fault. It's not her kid's fault for stare, being told not to stare at the sun. It's got to be someone else's fault when my kid is dumb. Said Farzan Mitul, the mother of a 12-year-old. If she said six or seven, I would have gotten this. A 12-year-old, if he's told once not to stare at the sun, should understand not to stare at the sun. He shouldn't need them to do that. He goes to a school in, uh, in East Flushing. Um Youngsters in the Big Apple will be tempted to stare directly at the uh, the uh, cool event as the moon covers 89% of the sun, potentially damaging their retinas and even leading to partial blindness, worry parents said. Now, I know 
probably in the chat's going to happen. I know there's people out there that think it's a conspiracy and that they're trying to stop us from getting vitamin D. If you feel that way, please stare at the sun for five minutes. Please get all the vitamin D you want. I need Be you to Be summed it up best, that thought. Natural yeah. selection. Yes. Exactly. It's what it is. The, the woman again, another woman, they'll look at it and become blind. My son is one of those kids. You tell him not to look, he's going to look. And he always wears glasses. And he already wears glasses, said son. You're just a 28-year-old beautician with a six-year-old son. I like they throw it. She's a beautician. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I know why you Not know. a scientist. But, um, <laughs> but it's saying, like, my kid already has bad vision. Don't let him. If, you're so, if your kid is not listening to people, that's mm-hmm. on you. Like, that's on, that's not the school's job. To say the government needs to get involved and the schools need to get involved more because my kid doesn't listen. You should know my kid doesn't listen. It's your kid. Not that you make. I, I, I don't yell at my. I've never yelled at my kid. I only yell at people that give us money to do podcast. I, I, I yell. I only yell for money. I never yell out of love. I don't yell at anyone I care about. Um. So I've never yelled at my my kids. Laugh is one day. But I think when they were like t- twelve and ten, as a joke, I pretended to yell, and they almost cried. And they're like, oh, you don't do that. Even as a joke, they're like, you never yelled at us. I never hit my kids. I don't do that. I talk with my kids. I discuss things with my kids. I love my kids. I think they're great. I'm going to raise my I'm kids like they they're Burger King everyone. drive-thru employees. Right. You I'm fuck up, I'm going to pull a gun. Ever... Yes. Well, they wouldn't have guns anyway. But they, um, I'm not saying I would ever. I, I, my kids listen to everything and are the perfect people. No one's the perfect people. But if my kids were told. Not to stare at the sun because it could burn their eyeballs out. They like their eyeballs and they're intelligent people. I think, it, if anything, this article should be New York City should get involved and take all these kids away from these parents. Any parent who says, I'm going to get mad at the school, you shouldn't have your kid anymore. You you have it just for the taxes. That's what you have your fucking kid for. Fucking beauticians. Fuck off. Um, where are you, Any more part of this article? Oh, yeah. The eye sizzling spectacle will be visible in the Big Apple between 210 and 436 with a maximum view at 325. It's just moments after the bell rings in many city classrooms and kids are set free to travel home unsupervised. Listen, we're not just worried about the kids. You know how many people, like dudes who hang out in the corner in New York are going to look up? Good. We're going to get them blind now too. Everyone's going to look up. Everyone will. Every single, even for one second, you're going to go, hmm. It's just... Be inquisitive. It just depends how long you do them. You know what I mean? If you're a guy and you walk by a group of girls and they're like, you know, they're not girl, women. So they're like, you know, me. And they walk by and you happen to notice that they are attractive. You could do the quick and then keep walking about your day or do the and stare and then you're a creeper. It's the same thing with the sun. You quickly look, you move on your day. You realize the two of you aren't meant to be and you fucking move on. That's what you do. I can't I, say this. Uh, I, oh, go ahead. I would agree with you, except for I had this one thing where I saw a g- girl on a subway and I, I fell in love with her. It must have been the angels. And then I had to kill myself because she never wanted to be with me. But yeah, but you didn't keep staring. You just went home she's and beautiful. you could go home and worship the sun. That's You're fine. beautiful. It's true. You're beautiful. Instead so of saying beautiful, about. you should go dipping in do that. Better. Um, it can be dangerous if they are outside. Work. No, it Pretty can be not. dangerous if they are outside. Said ah fuck, Mintawanu Avdi, whose four year old son attends the aptly named Bright Beginnings Preschool in Jamaica Queens. I like how the post is throwing little digs at everything here. The post is like this article blows. Let me punch it up <laughs> real quick. Children are curious. My son, too. You might tell them, don't look up. But you know how they are. Some are going to do it anyway. See, I like that. At least she said some are going to do it anyway. She's not saying it's the, anyone else's fault. It's your yeah. kid for being a dope. Catherine Colon, or Colon, sorry, 39, whose five-year-old gets out at a PS35 in Hell's Kitchen. I like how we're just learning their names and where their kids go to school. This is yeah, great this for is pedophile. a great pedophile. article for pedophile. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is basically like, you like this cute kid who's not going to listen to his parents? I got a location for you. And Terry, I mean, they're you not can't play the, the game on the subway. They're giving us their mom's name. It's like, <laughs> who's Catherine Colon's son? Oh, me. Oh, she said, told me to bring you home. Whose last name is Colon? You know, she, the guy's like, 
well, your kid, don't worry, your kid's not staring at the sun, but I'm staring at your son. Like, ah, no. Oh, <laughs> God, damn it. God, that's even worse. This lady, Catherine Colon, whose five year old gets out at Hell's Kitchen at 220, said she's nervous her daughter will suffer vision damage. Like, they're already not having faith in their kids. Like, they're already like, my kids, stupid. We all know my kid's so dumb. How, you know that woman that always tells her husband, uh, my husband will never figure that out. He's fucking stupid. And by the way, he figured it out. You didn't even realize oh, it. Yeah. You're too busy yapping to realize he already took care of it in a day ago. I'm afraid for my child. I worry about her because she is curious and might want to look up for a short time. Without the proper glasses, that's no good. Children are curious. My son, too. You might tell them, don't look up. You know how they are. They're gonna. By the way, New York Post just played that, just did that quote twice. <laughs> it wasn't me reading the wrong thing. They put it in the wrong, they, they so don't care. They put it in there twice. So who's the piece of shit in this story? Um, oh, wait, hold on. This is, I, just, I just saw this. He gets out of school at 245. He takes the bus and gets home at 345. That's when everything is happening. I'm really nervous about him, said the 35-year-old Burger King manager. <laughs> The New York Post is being ruthless. They are not fucking playing games today. They haven't, Food they haven't, service they, they workers. Haven't quoted, they haven't quoted one scientist. <laughs> no MIT Sloan quotes right now. No. <laughs> Who's the piece of shit in this story? Is it the parents for blaming, saying it's the school's fault no matter what happens, not blaming their kids or themselves, or taking any responsibility if their children stare at a fucking eclipse? Is it the school? For not just the school and this, this, I'm not saying all schools, but we take a lot of days off anyway. We're like, what is that a holiday now? If you're afraid it's going to happen, just send them home. Now, here's the thing. I know what you're saying. Well, if they're home, Pat, and all these people are working and doing stuff, then their kids will stare at the sun because they're home and no one's watching them. Exactly. Now it's actually on you parents to fucking take care of your own kid, to talk to them about the eclipse, to talk to your kid in general, to sit there and say, hey, I know it's going to be exciting and fun, but it can't hurt your eyes. You know what? I know I usually say you only get one hour on your uh, on your iPad or video games or whatever. Between three and five, you get an extra hour. You play any game you want. I don't care. You have fun. You can do whatever little thing you can do to keep them entertained. Even if you can't be there, do whatever. Don't look at it. Talk to them about it. Let them learn responsibilities. Let them learn that your mom, the parents talk to them. Instead of you're just close school, so the parents have to fucking be parents. You know, is it? Yeah, do just your talk to them for talk to them like an adult. Hey, Quattro, you know how I say you've ruined my life. If you look into the sun, it's going to ruin yours. Do you want to be daddy? Of course you don't. <laughs> no, you don't want to be miserable, held down by an anchor for eighteen years. That's why we call you a little anchor as a nickname. It's like, I was going to bring you to school, but daddy has a podcast that makes no money. (laughs) Daddy's still doing the POS show for 12 people every morning. Yeah, it's just you, me, and Quattro on the show. (laughs) Can't get any guests anymore. Um, Is it the New York Post? We're throwing shape. On all these fucking parents. Like, I, I get it. You write the article because it's a good, it got me. It was a good headline. But I didn't realize inside it was just going to be like, we'll quote you. But we're going to call you an idiot without calling you an idiot. But kudos to you. By the way, I don't even you know the New York Post has given up on just one person writing stuff. It's always two people now. So I think like maybe one person wrote the, because it's George, Georgette Roberts and Natalie O'Neill. I bet you one of them just wrote the article about the schools being bad. And then the other one, like, I'm guessing George. George F feels like the more fun one. George F was probably like, you know what? Fuck this. Let's get some, let's, let's dig into these quotes. I know we have a quote there, but let's say she's a Burger King manager. Let's say she's a teacher. Some morons. I'm enjoying that real good. So who's the piece of shit? Uh, v did put a good option. The New York Post for doxing kids. <laughs> <laughs> But that's not actually my piece of shit here. My piece of shit in this story is the parents, but not for the reason you present it, Pat. It's because they don't understand what's going on here. The school wants your kid to have damaged eyes. Why? What's the agenda they're trying to push right now? Two things, trans and drag queen story time. Both things that get a lot easier to accept if you can't see what you're looking at. Yeah. So the school wants the kids to be blinded 
So that way they can't tell that that's a man dressed as a woman reading them a story. Or that thing is a penis, not a big clit. And when they say that, they go, it's truth, it's factual, everything is sad, it's factual. <laughs> yeah, it's, they, want, they want your kids to be tricked. That's the eclipse. Of the heart. And you're to blame. You give Oof. trans a bad name. Um, I cut also, out. Did you, oh. oh, okay. I didn't hear one part. I'm like, did he forget the words? <laughs> no, I shot through the. Huh? No, it was me. You, I, I started getting the phone calls again. So. No, you're good. Um, you give trans a bad name was the punchline. But uh, also, I don't oh, blame the good. kids or the parents too much because, like, you're absolutely right. The way we grew up, if there was a problem with a teacher, you were the problem. Which is why in first grade, I started hating all authority because Miss Jones was a dumb bitch who didn't like enthusiastic kids and made me hop my bunny every day. And I'd go home to my parents and be like, no, you need to behave better. And I'd be like, I'm really not fucking up. This woman's killing my love and passion for learning. And they were like, nope, it's on you. And at that point, I went, well, anybody in charge is probably a piece of shit. Yes. So for me, and that's, the piece of shit are parents. Right. They never understand. There you go. They don't. In the other day, my mom threw away my. (laughs) The other day, my mom threw away my best porno mag. Can you believe that? (laughs) I forgot that was a lie. (laughs) The PC one, my best one. Not all of them. So she goes, "Which one's your best?" She went through them. (laughs) She's like, "So what was the stickiest?" You can keep this. Yeah. Uh. There you go. Learn welding. You're you're right, Scott. Do a thing. And another thing, Scott says all the time. Click the fucking bean button. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Thank you guys for watching today. We appreciate it. Hope you all have a great weekend. Happy WrestleMania weekend, everybody. Happy Final Four weekend to fucking everybody. Hope you have a good fucking weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. I don't think we have any guests lined up yet, but it'll be a fun one regardless. If you're not subscribed to the the YouTube channel yet, please do. Subscribe there, and you'll know when the shows come out. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then Tuesday, 8 p.m. If you want to see the Tuesday, 8 p.m. show, and you don't get to watch it live, the only way you do that is join the Patreon for three dollars a month it, it helps us to grow the show and do that we appreciate everyone that's been on here please go see bobby performing wherever he's at i'm in derby performing uh tonight some tickets left there if you're in connecticut area come on out great show got larry's comic dave sheen's headlining uh the kid who got in trouble on jazz and aj for calling him old is middling james had and a 15 year old yeah, boy is telling dark jokes about john benet ramsey so we're gonna have a good time there so come out and see that show um all next week i'll also be on uh 95 9 the fox again if you're in connecticut area or want to stream that from two to seven so listen to me there but we'll see you guys all on monday bobby tell them the thing that you tell them at the end uh before we do that do you think stud joe should come out like roman reigns and be like you all hate me but I'm the reason you are at the table. I'm the. He head has of the done table. that, but he did it so bad that they fucking. Just it didn't even work. Over. Well, on yeah, that note, if you're gonna rip off Roman Reigns, make sure you do it well. Uh, remember what Kobe said: if the world's against me, the world's gonna lose. And on that note, and the helicopter won. We'll, we'll see you Monday.